No, forget about the music. We, I'm just happy to be here. I don't think we're going to be able to do the music and all the uh, cool little bells and whistles that you're used to on Twitch, unfortunately, because I have no idea yet how to set those up. And no, you can't see me, but you see the background. Okay, Cage. Gage, if you, um, I don't know if you want to give a little bit of a background on, um, one of the things that we talked about, just an overview, um, or even Michael, if you're still here, I can't see who's in the chat, I only can see the chat itself, so we will, yay, okay, yes, um, you can feel free to share, uh, like I said, this is the relationship slash dynamic slash advice stream. So there's going to be a little bit of both. Hi, Peppy. How are you? Welcome. Good to see you. I'm glad you could make it. Um, we are hopefully going to touch on some Kage. Oh, okay. Kage. Thank you. Um, hopefully we're going to be able to touch on some uh, serious topics as well as uh, gain some wisdom uh, from my wisdom. So if there's anybody who um, has a question first or I will use uh, the questions that I have already gotten um, on Reddit uh, as I am a very active member of the um, relationships subreddit and the x no contact reddit um, as a moderator and uh, I give advice there so if you guys want to share or have a question I'm happy to answer that otherwise we can go through with the first question um, that I have been asked here hopefully this will not shut down on us and we'll be able to continue on together for at least an hour i was shooting for two hours but let's just try to shoot for one hour okay kage go ahead sure and michael too if you want to as well uh give a little bit about your background um tonight uh my ideal format was going to be that we do the advice portion and talk about relationship dynamics and then we all have a share together uh, in our server where we can you know each uh, speak to each other so let's still try to do that if I don't get shut down here again by OBS or by my computer which for some reason seems to be freezing okay Michael Michael Bones says um, you sort of know some of my story if we could expand on that if you'd like or if you could just answer this how does one learn to love yourself again this is a great question I know it is what I must do, but when I try, I do not know how. My mind blocks me. I always hold on to time and love heals all wounds as a saying. But how do we love ourselves when our mind does not let us? This is a great question. A lot of times, uh, and I'll touch on your question first, uh, Michael, uh, because Kage is still writing his, but... A lot of times, the reason that we don't love ourselves, the reason that it's hard to love ourselves is because we have not been taught to do so. We have many times grown up in abusive environments as children, and that's the truth. We have not been taught to love ourselves, and we don't know how. Some of us lose that love for ourselves because in the process of experiences we've had we lose respect for ourselves we lose respect for humans and ourselves being humans making mistakes we consider ourselves unworthy of love subconsciously this is something that happens to us subconsciously so we're not always you know hyper aware of it but that's what this stream is for, is to be able to become hyper aware of it. And even the point where Michael is right now in his healing, he's actually in a great place because he even recognizes and is able to recognize that he doesn't. So actually, that's as much as it doesn't sound like it, that's a reason to pat yourself on the back 
and use that as empowerment for further uh, self-reflection. When we do self-reflection, which is very difficult uh, for many of us, because we've been taught to hide, we've been hiding all of our lives behind some mask, haven't we? Hiding behind this mask and then coming out of it as Michael is. Make no mistake, Michael, you are coming out of it. Learning to love yourself is going to be a process for you because that may not be something that you have experienced. You may still have guilt. You may still have shame. Letting go of these things takes time. And but to love yourself as well is to be able to see the support around you, if that makes sense. Obviously, in my Discord, and just personally to all of you, I offer that support uh, as, as well as our group. But me personally, I choose to offer that support. We have to look for reasons to love ourselves, even when we are feeling those moments of shame. As well. Okay, let me finish reading here. I try to practice loving myself, but it's hard. I am like near the end of my journey in a lot of ways. Uh, no, your journey is actually just beginning. You are literally becoming aware of something that you were not aware of before. So your journey, especially in healing, is just starting. You're going to make the choice to love yourself. Feeling it and doing it are two different things, as we talked about today. But if you can come up with, and I'm happy to help you with this as well, loving behaviors that you may or may not have experienced before, using these affirmations and loving behaviors to yourself, I like to tell people it's like dating uh, yourself, right? You, you have, you know, have tried to have relationships and those relationships have generally become abusive ones or ones that you were not happy in and the reason is you were not loving yourself and you did not know how and the other person did not know how to love you either because we choose what's familiar to us from our childhood. More I mean just like your living hell is starting to fade away. Good, I'm glad to hear that I'm gonna I always remind myself that I care so much about everyone, but I'm one of those people too and that's crazy sometimes. Yes. Sometimes it is good to get out of ourselves and stop focusing on ourselves to focus on others in order to remove depression from our lives. And depression can come a time will heal uh, some of those wounds, but the act of loving yourself is literally a daily, daily practice. And that is by asking yourself questions of what is loving myself? What is self-care to me? It is very personal, but many of us have certain things that we all need. Uh, in, especially in the healing process, we need support for one. For two, we need to do the hard self-reflection. And I know it's hard because I have done it. The hard self-reflection to understand and grieve the process of the things that we did not get before, which we know now that we deserve intellectually. We don't always feel we deserve those things within our heart, if that makes sense. Hage says, so my parents, my mom was a normal girl, but my father had a case of bi severe bipolar disorder. And from the regime, I escaped. So many things happened in front of my eyes. And because of my father's disorder, a divorce happened. And I have little brother, which is eight years uh, little than me. So I decided to carry the burden and tried to replace a father place for my little brother. And my mother tried to replace my father with many partners. And this has become toxic 
and it's become a whole huge trauma. I think that's something many of us can relate to, not the part of escaping in a regime, knock on wood, we have not experienced that yet in the US, hopefully we never do. Um, <laughs> but I can definitely put myself in your shoes, especially with taking the place uh, of your father and the responsibilities of others that were not necessarily yours. And that is why I mentioned not having boundaries. Learning boundaries will free you from this, Kage. And having boundaries at first is literally using the word no. As a sentence, as a complete sentence, with no explanation. No is in fact a full sentence. And it's a very strong word that many of us in childhood are almost, uh, I wouldn't say punished for saying, but we're definitely not rewarded for saying it. I always remind myself, oh, okay, Michael, self-denial is a common thing in my life because at a young age I was taught that myself was wrong. Yes, and you were made to feel unworthy in your young life as was I, and you were made to feel um, like you needed to kind of hide your true face or your true feelings um, as they weren't always accepted by family members. This happened to me as well, which is why I know exactly what it feels like. All of these things I had to prove myself, yes, this is a common theme that I get with many, many people. We as children are not raised believing that we deserve unconditional love. Many of us grow up in environments with our families, uh, whether it's one abusive parent or another, that somehow we have to do something to be loved. We have to prove ourselves worthy of caring, of our parents' time, of our friends' time, of our boss's time. You see, this pattern from childhood actually follows us throughout our entire lives if we remain unaware. My purpose here, while I have whatever time I have, is to bring awareness to those truths. In Kage's situation, it is a boundaries issue that has kept him unhappy. Kage, would you like to share some of the information that I gave you with the chat about the boundaries and how to handle the situation with your brother and mom? Michael, one thing that you have to become aware of is that your past and your childhood are directly connected to your current situation. This feeling of not being able to love yourself and kind of teetering back and forth with the intellectual version of love versus the emotional understanding of love, they're two totally different things. Something I noticed right now is I was talking about self-reflection. You were talking about self-reflection. You do self-reflection on a daily basis. That's great to hear. For all the things that goes wrong, I blame myself. That's not great to hear. Because this may be a pattern of yours. You may have grown up since you did take on the responsibility for being your father and your father having the problems that he had you taking on the responsibility has led you to believe and it will keep you believing that everything that goes wrong is going to somehow be your fault and therefore you'll be stuck in a pattern of self-blame. Does that make sense? I don't want you to be stuck in that pattern because not everything is your fault. And once you learn to understand what is in my control versus what is not in my control, you will be able to be free from just accepting all the problems as being because of you. This brings you sadness 
this holds you back and slave, enslaves you like shackles. You do not deserve this. There is nothing that you did uh, that made your father be bipolar or that made your mom choose partners to replace the love that she lost with him. You do not deserve to be believing that everything that happens around you that is wrong, that you are to blame for that. It's not true. It's a lie. I dare I say it, it's a lie of the devil. <laughs> A lot of people don't like to use that term, but it is. It's a lie. And that lie, believing that in your core, as a core belief, is going to hold you back, not just now, but for always. Which is why, as you practice boundaries, little by little, and of course starting with the word no first, you will become free from that. What is my true responsibility and what is not my responsibility? These are the questions you need to ask yourself, Kage. To sort of touch on my trauma, I was raised devout Catholic. This is Michael speaking. And my home situation was great. My parents were wonderful people and gave me stability. But at school from a very young age of 5 to 12, I was abused psychologically by my Catholic school teachers. They would publicly humiliate me in front of my peers and would call my entire family trash and no good and constantly being gaslighted. This PTSD went on for years and because of my Catholic faith, divorce could not be conceived to me. Mm -hmm. Many people think that their abusive uh, tendencies towards future others, uh, such as bosses, friends, co-workers, etc., is going to only be coming from family. By some of the things I say, I, I could understand why that would lead you to believe that. But school is just as an important part of a child's life uh, as these other areas. And if you have been abused at school, or you have experienced bullying and or ridiculing, this will also lower your self-esteem. And as you can see here with Michael's situation, his parents were wonderful, but he experienced this abuse, which I'm sure at some point, this experience taught him to deny his own reality and to wear the mask. He says, as a child, because divorce isn't a thing in Catholic faith, but they annulled it and I was lied to. My father promised they would not divorce a year before it happened and all the stability in my life suddenly fell apart and all and everything I cared about was taken from me. Betrayal was a common theme in my life, but I could always rely on my parents. But then after everything, the people I trusted the most betrayed me. My story continues in the second part. Yes. Thank you for sharing that, by the way, Michael. Being able to share these things with each other, you guys, just so you know, this is not a weakness. Society wants us to believe that sharing our true feelings, our true experiences, horrific experiences as they have been, is a weakness. It's not. It takes strength and courage to be able to talk about these things. It takes motivation and really, however small, a sliver of self-respect to be able to share this and want to fix it. Many of us are hiding and in the dark and not in a place ready for healing. And that's fine too. I'm not saying we should judge those people. We shouldn't. And I don't. <laughs> but being able to come to the level where Kage and Michael are sharing this, uh, as well as everyone in our server last week who has done the shares, it's not difficult at first. But when you realize that you're being validated as you never have before, expressing these emotions that have been very difficult for you and that you believed you were all alone in, 
hearing others share these feelings lets us know that we are not alone. This is why I have decided to do uh, this group type of format. And I hope that by reading even this as well as what I'm telling them helps you guys who are still out there and silent and maybe not ready to share. Hi, Ray. It's okay. Welcome. Kage says, So you said that I robbed all the chances from them to learn from their mistakes and they need to be aware of the consequences of their actions. Yes, exactly. That is what I told you. And the reason that I told you that is because when we don't have boundaries, we take on the responsibilities of others. This is not good. Because then we rob others of being able to learn from the consequences of their actions towards us. I also gave you a story as an example. Do you remember it, Kage? Hopefully you do because that will give you wisdom in those moments. Ray also um, has just come in. However, Ray had an experience where I was teaching them boundaries as well. Uh, I don't know if you'd like to share, Ray, a little bit about what happened with your friends and what, uh, what we did about that together. Michael says, men are expected to be emotionless and empty golems. Yes, yes, Michael. But we are living, breathing humans with emotions just like women, and yet mental health resources and societal support is lacking for us. It's not a contest, and it's so sad. It is so sad, and you're absolutely right. Uh, men, men are raised from, from be, literally being little boys to not express their emotions. This does not mean they don't have them. Uh, and I'm not yet going to go into how this leads to abusive relationship dynamics with women just yet. I, I want to stay on this with Michael. Expected to be emotionless and empty golems. This societal expectation creates experiences and behaviors in men that tells them the only acceptable emotion for you is anger. You feel sad? Get angry. You feel hurt by something? Uh, fight them, right? These are, these are the messages. As if there is no other expression available to these little boys. So they grow up. They may be more sensitive. They may be more um, needing of support. And in school, what are they taught? They're not taught anything. They are made fun of. They are bullied for expressing emotions by boys who have been taught not to express emotions. Does that make sense? It's a cycle. It's an abuse cycle. Uh, but it's a cycle nonetheless. And then those boys come to the idea like, okay, well, I can't really talk to other boys. Uh, I can't talk to girls. I can't talk to my parents because I'm supposed to just express these emotions. Movies we watch, the strong, su supposedly archetypical male is one who is basically abusive and he's avoidant and he's silent like stone. This is not what we should strive to be, nor does this lead us to loving relationships. And men and women both want this. We all want this, and we deserve it. But the way to have it is to learn how to have it, because we have not been taught. So starting with awareness leads us into more loving relationships and on the path to healing. If we refuse to admit it, as sadly many men are still in denial uh, of these things, they don't realize that they've been expected to be emotionless empty golems. They just are living it, if that makes sense. They're living it. So they're not thinking about it and they're not aware. 
And all of these behaviors, uh, not just towards women, but also towards children, will come out in subconscious ways against those things. They think it seems like they're, you know, fighting you, you know, but really what they're fighting is the enslavement that they have had from being treated like they're, they're not uh, to, to be having emotions. They cannot show uh, sensitivity and uh, even express those emotions. Many men have this and they become violent. They have had no other way, that they definitely have not been taught another way, to express these other feelings and other emotions. If that does that make sense? I had a big sky says, I had a big fight with my mom, which was over me going to a shop, and I said no because I could have COVID. And basically she started saying shit and told my family now I'm getting nasty messages from them all because I don't want to risk others' health or life. Because my mom, who has constantly been testing negative, couldn't be bothered to get up. All the messages have been causing me to have panic attacks. This wasn't my first argument like this with my mom or family. I've had worse, and I'm always the one who gets put down and made to feel useless. At the end of it, I'm always named as the one to blame. Yes, Sky, I can relate to this. Also, COVID is a touchy subject, and I won't, you know, go into the vaccines conversation, but what I will touch on is this very important part, and this is that your mom started sending messages to others about what you were doing. We don't know why, but this is a boundary that you can erect with your mom for the future and that boundary obviously starts with no but expressing to your mom that in those times when she is going to blame you for things she can do that but you are not going to stay there and listen this is a boundary that you are setting and it does not matter what age you are whether your mom respects this or not is irrelevant you will have the practice of letting the person in your life who is destroying your self-esteem know that you don't have to stop what you're doing but I'm going to take action of what I'm going to do when you do that does that make sense Sky? These arguments will continue with mom, but they will continue with her by herself in the room. Because you will make a boundary. You have not been taught, and I will show you how. I just did with this first boundary that I recommended. Yes, mom, you can say what you'd like to say, but I'm not going to listen to it anymore. Because that's your choice, Sky. There is no shackles sitting you there to the chair when mom is engaging in blame. Mom very likely has been blamed for many things herself. Does that make sense? She has a pattern now of blaming you because she was blamed. If you go deep enough into mom's past as a little girl, you will find blame and shame sitting in there silently behind mom's mask. And that's fine for her. We don't ask mom to change. We focus only on our own change. Does that make sense? Mom, you can get engage in blaming me, but I'm no longer going to listen to this. Michael says, being a man is about, comf about being comfortable with yourself and your emotions, not being some sort of hyper-masculine and emotionless creature. Yes, Michael, I totally agree with this. 
more men need to hear this. This, this message, hopefully, uh, is one that many people, I wish more and more people were here to read that uh, from you, as well as the other men who are in here, because that is the truth. It is about being comfortable with yourself and all your myriad of emotions, not just expressing anger or expressing hostility. This is not, this is not even being human. It's not what being human is about. Ray says, sharing emotions and problems make you vulnerable, not weak, and there's nothing we can do about it. We can't be strong all the time. This is true. That's exactly true. They do make us vulnerable, but in that vulnerability is where we can find strength, if that makes sense. By sharing it with each other, especially in a safe environment, I do not recommend sharing it with, you know, Joe Schmo down the street or uh, Sally Service who's, you know, taking your, uh, taking your order. But in a safe and supportive environment, as I am trying to run with these group chats uh, and group shares, as you guys know in the server, if you do exclamation point discord, it will show you that. There is support there and validation there. This is something many of us have never got to have, nor have we recognized it, which is why we can't always give it. We can't give what we haven't learned as children. And we can't expect others to give what they haven't learned as children. Does that make sense? That includes sometimes our mom, our dad, our co-workers, our friends, or people who we consider friends, but then we're going to find out they're not really our friends. And as a situation that Ray was in, if you don't mind me sharing, Ray, uh, I won't go into detail, but... Ray came to the realization that these people who were poking fun, quote-unquote, making jokes uh, about people, were not their actual friendship. They were there getting basically narcissistic supply and laughs out of the misfortune of others. You cannot expect people like that who laugh at the misfortune of others to be there for you. Or to even, you know, have your back in times when we really need it. Because those people are not capable of doing that at this time. And nor should we expect them to. But the boundary here, in this example as well, when you have friends like this, is you can keep doing that, but I don't agree with this. So I'm not going to be a part of this. Now... Just to give a little background, at first, before Ray and I talked, there was some hesitation. There was some fear. They won't like me anymore. I will lose my friends. Who will I hang out with? All things that are very understandable fears for us and very real. And I said, change your perspective. You won't be losing friends. You will be losing people who would have spoken about you behind your back. You'll be losing people who were mocking you and making fun of you and making fun of others. In, the, in this case, they were making fun of others with Ray, trying to include Ray in these terrible things. And Ray, on their own, came to the realization that, yes, this is true. The truth speaks to us. And that's what I'm doing here. I am literally speaking truth. Everything I tell you guys is from experience. I have gone through it. I have studied it. I have learned from it and been able to get to this place of self-reflection. Uh, sorry, self-actualization where I am now from all of that self-reflection. And I don't want you to have to do that self-reflection alone. I want to give you the awareness so that you can start on the path to self-reflection. And when you're on that path, it leads to change. Does that make sense? 
uh, Michael says, Satan seeks to create chaos within us, and men respond with rage or cowardice. Yes, and both create dysfunctional relationships with each other. Yes, this is so true, Michael. Uh, these responses which men are taught are the only acceptable ones, rage or cowardice, or rather avoidance. They both do not lead to connection. They both do not lead to sharing or mutuality, which is needed in family, which is needed in friendship, which is needed in relationships. Many of us have had breakups, uh, and I'm talking to you here at my at no contact people, and there have been lack of connection. The breakup was a catalyst to you coming to other realizations about yourselves and also about the other person that you chose. And I say you chose because relationships don't just randomly come to us. It's frozen? It's what, it says be right back? Oh gosh, this thing is, I cannot see this thing. Okay, one second. Let's just try this now. Still be right back. I don't even have that on. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry if you guys cannot see it. Wait one second. I keep having to remove these. I don't understand why I'm not showing that. That's not even in here. God, this, this issue. You know what? I'm just going to keep speaking my truth. I'm sorry, you guys. If you can't hear, if you can't see me, I apologize to you, but I'm not going to let that stop me. Um, so I do hope you'll stay, regardless of you, if you can see me or not. Uh, for some reason, it is not uh, displaying anything that I'm actually showing. Uh, I'm seeing two screens. I don't know what the heck is going on with my OBS, but let's keep on going. Um, okay, it's uh, Kage said, yeah, that parents ha that had a child that was doing drugs and party all night, and then they go to the therapist to make the therapist talk to the child, and the therapist asks questions about if they tried to somehow communicate the problem to their child, and their answers were no from the calm to aggressive ones. So the therapist said, you guys need the help, not the child, because you guys were the ones who robbed the chances from him to learn that he needs to be aware of his actions and therefore giving him consequences. It is about the example you told me before. Yes, Kage, that's a perfect example of boundaries. That psychiatrist was pointing out that the parents are the ones with the problems because the parents didn't allow the child to have the consequences of their terrible actions. The parents take on the responsibility of the child where that does not need to be the case. Sky says, whenever I talk to my mom, or family about how I feel, I just get shoved away, like today. I got a message from one of my aunties saying they will never see me or treat me like an equal or family anymore. Can you believe this? That is absolutely terrible, Sky. And I could totally understand why this would make you sad and even maybe feel unworthy and like you're to blame for all of this. But the truth is, and I know you can't see me though I'm looking you in the eye, you're not. This is not your fault. These are choices that the people around you, who are your family, are choosing. They're choosing this. This is not a reflection on you. This is a reflection on their choice. Does that make sense? They're choosing these actions. And I know that it hurts you. But there is a way for you to come to an understanding once you understand that this is their choice, that this does not actually reflect on you truthfully, you will not be bothered by the choices that they are making. The freedom is in 
being in this stream right now and becoming aware. Oh, they're saying uh, they're never going to talk to me. They want to shove me away, but this is not actually my fault. This is out of their fear. This is out of their own frustration and they're projecting this onto me. Do you see the perspective shift? Which is actually not really a lie. I'm telling you the truth. It's not only a perspective shift like tell yourself this sky. This is the actual truth. There is fear there and they're acting on that. There is frustration there and they're acting on that. That's not a reflection of you. That's a reflection of them and their choice. You wanting to care for others and actually not being selfish, which is what they expect from you, is angering them because you're showing them their own selfishness. Does that make sense? But with situations like mom and you having boundaries with mom, you will be saying, you can cast the blame all you want, but I'm not going to listen to this. You choose what you get to say to me, and I choose whether or not I get to listen. This is adulthood, Sky. This is an adult decision. And I don't care if you're 9 or 59, this applies. You choose who you're going to have in your life and who you're not going to have in your life. No matter what age you are, there are certain situations where you have to stay under your parents' roof for a certain period of time, right? But that does not mean that you need to subject yourself to their abuse. You don't. And that does not mean that you cannot call it out for what it is when it's happening. You are verbally abusing me. That's fine if you want to keep doing that, but I'm not going to listen to it anymore. That's a boundary. Does that make sense? Ray, it's okay. Yeah. Michael says, Perspective is the most powerful tool you have. God gave us his power to change reality with our very minds. Yes, I do believe we have the power to change reality with our minds. With faith, we can move mountains. And this is very real. We can change our lives by simply making the decision to change how we look at things. We must have the courage to say no, to despair, and to work for a better future. Yes, exactly. This is so true. Saying no is very, very important. Learning how to say no and accepting that no when it's coming out of your mouth in a very feeble way because you've been afraid to do it, that's where the support comes in. That's where I come in. That's where uh, your new found support group will come in, letting you know that it's okay to say no. Yeah, you've been taught that it was not okay to say no. I'm here to tell you from experience of being taught the same thing. It is okay to say no. Being able to say no, forming that boundary is literally going to lead you to happiness. There is no depression when the word no exists in your vocabulary as strongly as your yes. Anka says, my recent... Anka, hello, welcome. Anka says, my recent breakup actually brought me to v -word and VTubing. That's wonderful, Anka. You took that pain and you've actually applied it to this new venture. I think that's very healthy. Uh, Michael Bone says, no problem, fam. It's very good. I'm so, yes, so sorry, Sky. It is so wrong. It is so wrong what Auntie is doing. And also your family. Uh, especially your mom, you know, she's she should be your support. But how can she be if she's never learned how? She can't be. She cannot be. And the moment you stop looking to mom to be that support and hoping that she someday will change, you will become strong. 
And getting to that place of acceptance will allow you to accept that flaw in the future in others, like your future boyfriend or your future girlfriend. This is not going to make a lot of sense to you guys, but let me posit this. When we have these types of strained relationships with our family as a child growing up, we keep them with us subconsciously. And even as we grow, we're always looking to fix that first primal relationship dynamic with our parents. If your parent did not accept you, you're going to find a mate who you also feel does not accept you. You will not know why. You will not understand why you're suddenly attracted to this one person over another person. But it is that. It is that silent dynamic working in your adult life. I don't want you guys to go through that. If you have been abused as a child, your relationships will also look like abuse. There will be different forms. It doesn't matter which forms, but most of them will match the types of abuse that you experienced. And I'll give you an example. As a child, um, I was abused. I was abused verbally. I was abused mentally. I was abused sexually. Uh, and definitely physically. I, too, like Michael, learned that soldiers do not cry. Soldiers do not express their emotions. So I was taught that the only emotion that is acceptable for me to express will be rage or running away, and in my case, dying. So by the age of 12, I tried to kill myself. And then I ran away from home, and I never went back and grew up on the streets. This was not a wise choice, and I do not recommend taking that path. But I'm glad I took that path, because what I realized is as dangerous and uh, as, as violent as my home was, I was not prepared for what I was going to find on the streets. Everything that I learned on the streets further demoralized me and destroyed my self-esteem to the point where I literally believed that I was unworthy of love and no one would ever truly care for me and anything that anybody did for me is a transaction. There has to be some transaction, some reason. I need to prove something, right? Fast forward to a couple years and suddenly I like boys. I don't have a mother figure. I don't have a father figure. And I definitely don't know that I'm following a, a dangerous relationship pattern. I find a boy. Three boys like me, but I only like one boy. The boy who calls me names. The boy who pushes me around. The boy who holds my hand just a little too hard on the first date. And the boy who is drinking and doing drugs. That's the boy I was attracted to. This pattern continued on. This applies to both sexes, by the way. This pattern continued on to the second boyfriend who threw me in front of a car and then told me that he loved me from jail. These situations... In all of my abusive relationships, and I had many, I did not know I was being abused. You guys might think, what? Of course, of course you would know. How would I know if I didn't even know that what I experienced as a child wasn't normal and happening to everyone else? You are normalized to certain types of abuses and then you try to fix those early relationships as I was doing subconsciously with my parents, trying to fix the relationship with my parents through these romantic relationships. And so each of the boys I was attracted to had the exact same qualities 
as the ones I was used to growing up in. Does that make sense? It wasn't until multiple times, and probably the grace of God, I'd like to say, that I became aware that I'm repeating a pattern in my life. I didn't know what the pattern was. I definitely didn't know it was abuse. I didn't start studying abuse or reading books, uh, taking classes and things like that. I hadn't known any of that. I just knew, shit. This guy has just told me, sit the fuck down. I feel like I've heard this before. I've, I've been here before. And I didn't know when. I couldn't tell you when if you had asked me then. But I understood that I've been here before. This has happened to me before. And that was the beginning of awareness, which is what I want to give to you guys. We are repeating relational patterns from our childhood every single day with the people we choose to allow in our lives. Sky right now has the choice, and so does Kage, and so does Michael. Actually, everyone in this room has the choice to take this awareness, what I'm showing you, and apply it immediately to their lives by looking back and in, in current situations where you're under 17 and living with your parents, by looking at the current and seeing the pattern before it starts again, before you subconsciously engage in these actions. My job is to create that awareness for you using my own experience. Not just my experience, but teaching you what I learned from it, how I learned from it, and how you can learn from it by telling the truth to you and sharing my truth. So I say that to say this. If Sky continues with no boundaries, if Kage continues with no boundaries, because you guys are both in that situation, you can connect with each other on that level. If they continue in this situation, I promise you their future mate will elicit that feeling from them. You are responsible for all of this. You are responsible for my feelings. You are responsible for everything that's going wrong with us. Right? This this issue, this topic will keep coming up in every relationship they have. Why? Because they didn't fix the first relationship, the family relationship. Our only relational map is our family when we're young. Our only way to relate to the world is from our first parents. When we're little, they are God. Yes, we can find out later if God exists or who, who is God. That's irrelevant. E even if you don't believe God exists, that's fine, but it doesn't matter. Your first gods were your parents. And if they did not teach you love, if they did not teach you compassion, if you did not get unconditional support from them, then your future relationships will consist of that as well because you learned it first with your parents. The freedom from that is awareness. Because from awareness, you can do something about it. You can change it. Does that make sense? Anka says, I'm so sorry, Sky. If you ever need someone to talk to, I'll always have an ear free. That's wonderful, Anka. Yes, this applies, I think, for both Anka and I, Sky. Uh, you can speak to us anytime. Uh, obviously, there's others in the server as well who have experienced what you're experiencing and would be able to support you as well. You're not alone in this. I know when we're young, we tend to think, I'm the only one. What's wrong with me? Why me? You know, Why is this happening to me? If God exists, why is he letting this happen to me, right? I get that. I've been there. And I completely understand it. But I've come through it. I'm no longer in that place. 
And I want to bring you and everyone that I can possibly reach out there that freedom by using my life examples and my lessons. Oof, I had to learn that one the hard way with my mom. She was a mean person. Yes, Anka. And you may be drawn in the future to mean people as well, mean romantic relationships because of that. Because of that first relationship, that first dynamic that you learned. What do I have to do to get mom and dad's love? What do I have to prove to be worthy? Right? They taught you silently these messages, these core beliefs that you grow up with and that you have grown up with. But those are not true. Those are their core beliefs and their projections onto you of those, if that makes sense. Michael says, it is hard to find a job with PTSD. Oh, yes, I know. Because workplace environments with a boss and employees reminds me of my childhood in school. It's also why I left college. I plan on working for the church, ironically, because I recently came back on God's order, as you know, Venus. But how do we overcome this fear? These triggers. The last time I tried to get a job, my body physically rejected it and I wound up in the hospital. Yes, Michael. This PTSD is not something that you are going to be able to get over quickly or on your own. You need support for this. And those bosses and employees reminding you of school there's a reason for that. You are hypersensitive because of what happened to you. You're hypersensitive to catching or recognizing those qualities in others and then preparing for it. I'll give you an example again from my life. So there was a time when my uh, parent uh, picked up a rocking chair and threw it at me. Now, I was not ready for this. Uh, things were very erratic in my house, and there was actually, in retrospect, no reason for them to do this. They were mad, and that's the way that they were taught to express anger. Right? So, likely, in retrospect now, as the child, I can look back and say, not only was uh, that person likely mad, but they were probably frustrated about things in their own life and didn't know how to handle it themselves. They were taught to hide those emotions and that anger is the only acceptable expression. So when they had kids, it was me. I was the first kid. I was the prototype kid. So guess who gets the rocking chair? I got the rocking chair, right? But I grew up physically in fear of being touched by others at all. Although I did not understand that physical boundary that people are not even actually allowed to touch me, I have a say in whether they touch me or not, I did not know this. Because in my house, if you said something wrong, you're going to have a rocking chair thrown at you. And what can be quote-unquote classified as wrong would change by day to day. No one would ever actually know what that was. That is the result uh, and the erratic behavior of growing up in an alcoholic household, which maybe not all of you have, um, or the household of a drug addict, which was mine. So I say that to say this. When I would be in romantic relationships, if I randomly got punched in the face, I understood this to be like the rocking chair moment, right? Because this is all I knew. So I would assume, oh, I said something wrong. Not, hey, I don't deserve to be hit for anything I say. This person is choosing to hit me, and that's not love. But I didn't know that then. I had to go through the process of learning all of these things and unlearning the things I learned from my family. Does that make sense? So when you're going through these fears, your fears are very real, but they are fears from the past. Working through those fears 
is going to be a process in and of itself. These triggers are not going to go away right away because your body is used to this. It's accustomed to this. It has grown up with this. So you will have to learn new ways of feeling strong in those situations. And one of them is boundaries. Another way is by literally using certain motivations and sayings that make you feel empowered. In your case, since you believe in God, there is many, many, many verses where God says to you, do not fear, for I am with you. Even in trial, even in pain, even in tribulation, I am with you. I am there. 350 something times in the Bible. That's one time for almost every single day of the year that God is reminding you, do not fear, for I am with you. I hope that helps you in that, Michael. These triggers need to be written down. You need to write these triggers down so that you become aware of what they are and when they occur to be prepared for them. And we can prepare for them together. I'm happy to do that. Okay. Uh, Kage says, about emotions, at some point as someone who tries to replace a father proposed, I was not able to show any sadness or anger. Over time, I learned to channel these emotions through gaming or 3D art. That's wonderful, Kage, that you've been able to channel those emotions. Now, hopefully, we can get you to the process of not only being able to channel those emotions, but start to express them and release them without fear in a way that is safe for you, but still loving to others, if that makes sense. You still will need to be able to express those emotions. And I'm happy to give you a list of emotions. I feel like there's a lot of men who need this, as well as a small checklist of four questions to ask yourself on the daily to start to really connect with those emotions that you were taught to push aside. This checklist that I will give you, uh, and just type it in the chat if you want me to uh, put it in the chat or give it to you today, I'm happy to do that as well, uh, will help you to reconnect and connect with your emotions that you have been taught as a man, and also those of you women who are out there too, um, to, to deny or to push away. Anka says, Michael, a lot of self-reflection and therapy for me. Yes, Anka. And I'm still not really in a great position. It's time and hard work. It is. It really is time and hard work. And I have done both of these things, which has led me to come up here and even be confident uh, to be able to help you guys and to be able to talk to you guys about these things. I've it's terrible that you cannot see me, and unfortunately, my thing is only showing this one image, but hopefully, the truth of what I'm telling you, the conviction from experience of what I'm telling you, is still game-changing, regardless of my graphics. Uh, Michael says, I've been through a lot of bad relationships, and it wasn't until God intervened and humbled me and started speaking to me directly and guiding me to tell me to stop and learn to love me. I cannot get back my family by starting a new one. Yes. I will simply recreate that which I fear and destroy that which I sought to repair. This message from God uh, is literally a godsend. And he, basically, I got the same exact message um, and, and I went with that message. I, I literally dove into that message. Uh, as I said, I will be coming out with a video as well as a podcast on how to find the right mate, how to use the book of Proverbs to find the right mate, because the book of Proverbs for me was life-changing. It also let me know that my story 
was validated. All the pain that I went through was validated. And that I was literally dating the, the bad men of Proverbs because of my upbringing. I found that is the only way to heal, Michael says, to surrender and accept in us that which is good. But what is good? God is good. I believe that is God because God is good and God is love. But for anyone of any faith or belief, always seek the good and the truth and the light and you will be taken care of with time. This is so true, Michael. Thank you so much for saying that. Yes, even if you do not uh, believe in God or if you not, do not believe in God yet or if you have anger towards God as I did, I definitely can understand having anger towards God uh, with our situations and our upbringing. Uh, no matter where you are with the idea of God or the idea of some higher power, it is true that seeking the good and seeking the truth and the light will take care of you. And that looks different for each of you, but the truth is always the truth. And hopefully that's all you'll ever get here. Kage says, your talk made me realize a couple things, but I want them to share with you later on. That's totally fine, Kage. If you don't want to share those revelations now, you don't have to. I noticed two patterns. One is about me and the other one is about someone else. Good. I'm glad. This, th that's why I'm here. I, my job is done here. I have helped one person. No more need to stream. <laughs> that's great. So I actually suffer from BPD and my life is literally just identity distorted thinking patterns and where they started from. Identifying identifying where they started from. Yes, yes, Anka, I can totally relate to that. That was one of my uh, uh, diagnoses, actually, when I went to seek therapy for a depression before I ever, you know, found out about abuse or that I was even being abused or that I have come from an abusive family and had a lot of reasons to be depressed. I had a lot of reasons to not like myself because I was taught that, although I didn't know that at the time. Uh, Michael says, within us is built a desire to love, but when we are abused, what is love is perverted or distorted. Exactly. When we are not given love, but rather hurtful things, and we desire love, we then are lost and do not know how to get love, because there is a misplaced understanding of what we want, what we want love and think we get love, but it is not love, and that is why we are unhappy. Yes, in, it's a little deeper than that, but yes, that is it in a, a very nice summary, Michael. I agree with that. So often I know what to do, but not how to do it. Yes, hopefully I will be able to help you in the how to do it, because I have done it. Uh, do it both ways. Send it in chat and to me in Discord the list. Okay, that's fine. I will do it both ways. So, a way that uh, men can begin to check in with their feelings is to use um, this checklist. And I will list... Oh, but you guys can't see my screen. Uh, I will put them in the chat. We are in workaround city over here, you guys. Whoever's still holding on with me, I'm so grateful for you because <laughs> this is just, this is probably not the stream uh, that we, none of us were intending to see. And believe me, I had so much more for you guys. I was doing all cool and neat things with my, uh, with my alerts and hoping to show you guys the chat, all kinds of things. Um, okay, this is the start of those questions. Okay, I'm going to say it and then I will type it into the chat. The first question to ask yourself is how am I feeling? This is a daily. This is something that you want to start doing daily, especially if as a child your feelings have been denied invalidated, blamed, or shamed. Start with, how am I feeling? The second question, again daily, is what caused this feeling? 
all kinds of feelings that you will write down because I will show you guys the feelings list. All kinds of feelings, write them down. And then what caused the feeling and why? So for instance, this is from 2008, right? How am I feeling? Frustrated, angry, determined, pain, relieved, right? Then the next question is what caused this and why? And then I would go into detail. Frustrated because I am in pain and jobless and I want to get a leg up in life and not be in debt. Sad face. Relieved that no one else can cause me pain right now but me because I'm in bed. Pain. My body feels bad and weak right now. Sick. On top of this, I have the flu. Angry. I am angry because I still have feelings of anger toward Chris, getting away with the evils he has done to me. Chris was the boyfriend that I had who told me, sit the fuck down. And before he even finished the sentence, I was able to recognize I'm living in a pattern. Although I don't understand the pattern, this is the moment that I got out of the matrix, so to speak, for those of you who ever saw the matrix. The pattern stopped with the awareness. And finally, the last one, which was determined. I am determined not to ever go back. Okay? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was determined not to ever go back. But I was still not aware of my family upbringing and how those early desires to fix that relationship led to me still continuing to try with Chris, who I now started to understand I was repeating an abusive pattern with. Michael says, for the empathetic and compassionate who suffer from a lack of self-love, my own exercise is to look at the inner child and give him the love no one else gave him. Be the guardian for them that no one else was. Give them some love. If your inner child is crying, give him a hug. And then give yourself that love. If he wants a snack, uh, if he wants a snack, eat some fruit snacks or some juice. Do not be afraid to humble yourself to that of a child. The progress you could not make then must start somewhere. Yes, Michael, this is true. And I often cover this when I talk to people about their inner child, especially in breakups, because when it comes to a breakup, we no longer have that support person that we used to be able to go to, that we used to spend 24 hours a day with. When we're living Reliving and reflecting through our traumas, self-care literally is taking care of that baby version of us that was taught to hide their feelings. This exercise that I just experienced, that I just read to you guys, which I hope you were able to uh, listen to, and if not, I'll make a clip of this, but I will also put it in the chat, of asking these questions is activating your connection to that inner child. How am I feeling? And then list those. All of them that apply. Then what caused this and why? This self-conversation from just these questions will enable you to start connecting to your true feelings. Then you are no longer hiding uh, from your inner child or continuing to invalidate your inner child. As you were taught, your feelings were invalid. And you, if you don't stop this pattern, believe you me, you will teach your own children that their feelings aren't valid, and I cannot let you do that. We cannot have additional generations through blindness 
of abuse, verbal, physical, mental, that continue on doing, teaching what our parents taught us. It is up to us now to change those patterns for our future, for our children, for the mates that we will choose. People like to think, I just fell in love. You didn't just fall in love. You chose that person. You chose the amount of time you'll spend with them. You chose the amount of thinking that you'll do of them or obsessing, especially in those beginning dating weeks. You chose them over somebody else. And you need to question that. Why did I choose this person? What is it about this person that reminds me of my family? How is it that my comfort level with this person is similar to my early family dynamics? If you start asking yourself those questions, you will go into relationships much more wary and aware rather than just letting your subconscious try to fix everything, uh, the, your inner child try to fix everything that was wrong with your first relationship your parents, and in your case, Michael, with school and the teachers. If you become aware of these things and you work through, and it's very hard work, work through the self-reflection, the trauma, reliving the trauma, and learning about abuse, what it is, what it looks like, how to have boundaries against it, what to say, what to think, what to do in those situations that you did not know before because you were not taught yet. Hopefully I will teach you in my lifetime. If you become aware and exercise those things, I promise you that your life will change. Your love will change. And who you choose to love will change. So happiness can be found. But first, we have to shed off our old shackles of our, the things we learned in our family. Shed off our loss of the expectation, especially that our inner child has, that these things will somehow come from the original person. They won't. So we have to go through the grieving the loss of that. We have to do that in a place of support, not alone. None of this happens alone. The self-reflection does. But even that doesn't have to be alone. You can do it with me. You can do it with us in a group. We can rise above this. We can rise above our past and no longer be a slave to it with our choices of mate, with our choices of who's going to be called friend, with our choices of boss. I'll give you another example, Michael, uh, specifically retaining to work and abusive bosses. As you guys know, which I explained to you, I had an abusive childhood. I was accustomed although I didn't know it at the time, to being verbally abused, to being insulted, to taking on the responsibility of everyone, as Kage and I also talked about. So, when it was time to find a job, I naturally and dysfunctionally gravitated to a support position because I felt like I'll be safer uh, if I wear this mask and I, you know, support someone who's strong. What this led me to was accepting less pay than what I was worth, being verbally abused at my job, always having stress for not being able to quote-unquote prove myself or meet the expectations of my boss, feeling alienated by my co-workers who also made fun of me, I say that to say this, 
Had I not grown up in an abusive environment, not ever been put down or physically abused, I wouldn't even have taken that job, would I? Because even in the interview or first couple days of the job, I would have been able to tell the warning signs, the red flags. You always hear about it, but you don't know what they are for yourself until you write down those triggers. Everybody's like, red flags, red flags. Yeah, society red flags, sure. But society clearly is engaging in abusive behaviors. Society is not the one to teach you about red flags. The book of Proverbs will teach you what red flags are and what they look like so that you can recognize them in yourself and in others for your future. Staying away from red flags and being aware of red flags is going to lead you to the freedom and happiness that you crave. Understanding what those red flags are, you learn by learning about abuse. Taking the time, as I did, to learn about what abuse is and what it looks like, what abusive people behave like, how they talk, how they act. You probably don't have the answers to these things. You have societal answers, but you don't have the answers with the awareness because you're not looking backwards. You want to know what to look out for in the, in the future? Remember your past. Write down these things that you're experiencing or that you have experienced in your current abusive environment and your past abusive environments. And those of you who have been abused by others, who are not your family, you can also be free of that by becoming aware as well. In Michael's case, he did not choose to go to that school. His parents chose that for him. His peers were not chosen by him. He didn't choose those people to be friends with him or to call them his friends. He understood that these people were not his friends. However, that also led him to feel isolated and to be fearful and to probably have to put on a mask of bravado, ignoring his own feelings, pretending certain things were not happening that were happening, denying his own reality. This is not just Michael. This is so many of us. The reason that I know it's so many of us is because this all comes from abuse. And I don't know Michael. I met him today. How could I possibly say all these things that he claims are very true? It's because I have been there and I have lived through the pattern and I have done enough research to be able to recognize the pattern whenever and wherever I see it in others. And now, because I have come out of the pattern, I have destroyed the pattern in my life, relearned and re-raised myself that I'm able to teach others while connecting with them, while validating them and having compassion because I have felt physically the things that they are feeling. I have felt emotionally the things that they are feeling so I can relate to these things. And it's not like I've forgotten them. I remember them. I just don't exist in them anymore. It is my past that I have worked through. I'm not hiding from it. And that's why I'm not hiding my truth from you guys. Because I feel that as terrible as it is, if I am bold about it, it will help you to be bold about it. it. Michael says very real and very true. 
he says, in a way, we've known each other for a very long time. Yes, it is that connection because we have experienced that very same thing. I'm not surprised that you could speak of my soul because when we arrive at our destination, the destination, we are all one. Yes, yes, I agree with that. The destination. And the destination, hopefully for all of us, at least those of us that are in my stream at this particular time, is self-actualization is finding the happiness that all of you deserve and is finding the ability at self-expression that you were not able to express. These things are learned behaviors, just like the dysfunctional things were learned behaviors. Now, hopefully I've been able to shed some light for you guys as well as share some tips. If you want more tips, uh, let me know. If you want uh, me to go deeper into some stuff I've already talked about, ask me. Ask me uh, any questions you want now about anything that I've touched on. Um, I will try to fix this one more time with maybe just at least adding a different screen so you could look at something else, if it's not me. Uh, hi, Rai again. Good to see you. Uh, image five. Let, let's see if this works, you guys. At least you should be able to look at something else. This is terrible. Maybe this. Hmm. And no, it refuses to change. I do not know why. This is very, very odd. I apologize, you guys. Any questions uh, that you guys have about anything I've touched on? Or anything that you want to continue to talk about before we hop into our group share? Or we could just wait till group share. That's fine, too. Thank you, guys. Let's do it too. Both Peppy and Ryokin, how wonderful. Oh, that little heart didn't come out, right? Yeah. <laughs> I wish you guys could see me smiling. I've, I've smiled so much, and unfortunately, you can only see this BRB AFK screen, which, by the way, for those of you who stream, I deleted, uh, so I don't know why you're still seeing it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's all very strange. Yes, Kage. Very wonderful woman. Thank you, Venus. We must heal. Yes, and we'll do it together. We'll do it together. Right, Michael? Kage says, some tricky thing I just figured out. Uh-huh. Because in my family, I tend to replace a father figure. Thank you so much, Peppy. Peppy says, you are very insightful and your voice is soothing. That, that really... I love hearing that. Thank you. They're not sleepless rambles. I don't understand why they're not. I've even tried like replacing new sources and it, it just stays on this, this source, even though I deleted the source. Does that make sense? I've skipped to other scenes. It didn't work. I've, <laughs> I've removed all the stream elements uh, thing. I mean, I literally don't have anything to show and it's uh, still this one screen. Kagi, you're saying you tend to replace your father figure. What was, what was the tricky thing that you figured out from that? <laughs> okay, yeah, we will hop into, uh, we'll hop into our group chat. Michael says, Trauma can also make relationships difficult because it can active hypersexuality, yes, or shut off our sexuality completely. I struggle with the former and it's hard as a Catholic because of lust. Oh, yes, I definitely can relate to that, Michael. Are you on studio mode? Good question, Rambles. I 
I don't know what mode I'm on. Uh, I'm also on some mode where there's a preview screen and a program screen. Um, and I don't know how this happened. I didn't press anything to do this, but it's very strange. Let me check uh, where studio mode would be. Kage says, I noticed this pattern in my relationships too. Yes, this is what I'm saying, Kage. This is what I don't want for you. I don't want you to repeat what you have experienced in your family, in your romantic relationships. And I'm telling you, you will if you do not start by having these boundaries with your family. It starts there. Some of us, you know, have long been in other romantic relationships. So now uh, we, we, you know, blindly repeating this pattern until the awareness comes. But you don't have to. Right now, if you learn boundaries and you really start to express them through support, which I'm happy to give you, uh, as well as the others who learn boundaries, I'm sure when they do, they'll be happy to give you information as well. Um, expressing boundaries with your family now will lead you to the comfort that you need, uh, like a muscle, exercising any muscle that's weak. You will exercise your no to the point where it becomes as strong with family and it will become stronger and respected by others. Okay. Okay. But if they have some problems or traumas, what should you do? Some of those problems and traumas are not your fault. I'll tell you one thing you should not do is take them on as your responsibility because it's not your fault and you are already starting in a self pa a, a pattern of self-blame. Does that make sense? For someone else, they may need to learn to take on <laughs> the responsibility for others. But in your case, that is not the case. You need to learn how to not blame yourself for other people's problems or things going wrong. And you need to learn how to use your boundaries with strength and conviction so that others are able to respect them. Your yes and your no equally powerful and equally as strong. As a friend, yes, you can bring them awareness. What you cannot do is change them. You can bring anyone awareness, and I strongly suggest you do. If they ask you questions or they want to know, ah, Kage, where did you hear about this boundary? You can teach them how to use boundaries if they don't have any. Likely they don't because they're your friend. You wouldn't be attracted to someone who had very strong boundaries because you have not experienced boundaries. Does that make sense? So once you learn boundaries, you will be able to teach that to them. Not everyone's problems should be your problems, friend, family, or whoever. That is something you can choose to take on. But Kage, I assure you, because this responsibility taking has become a habit for you, this will lead you to unhappiness. What you need to do is to, to learn how to start saying no to taking on the responsibilities of others. And ask yourself, is this my responsibility? If so, why do I believe that? And then check with somebody else. Write down, is this my responsibility? What it is? and check with somebody else, would this be your responsibility? And if they tell you, yes, I can see that that's your responsibility, uh, then rethink it and maybe take it on. But the point is, come to the awareness that you even have that question now. You're starting something new. You're on another path. You're suddenly asking yourself, instead of just, 
assuming this is my responsibility because I'm responsible for everything, is this really my responsibility and why? What exactly can I do versus what this person can do? If you start thinking in this way, it's a slight change of perspective by asking these questions. You will start to become more aware of what is your responsibility and what is not. Does that make sense? Sleepless Ramble says, in between those two screens, there should be a transition button. It should switch when you click that. Okay. Oh, this might be... Rambles may have led us to the promised land. Let's see if this works. <gasps> and he has. Rambles, you are unbelievable. Rambles, can you see me? Is it... Is it working? No, it's not. I still see the two screens. the display capture and I still have two screen grammars, but good try. We, we, we're making progress, I think. Okay. Kavi says... Oh, Peppy says... Uh, wow, Michael Bones, yes. Peppy agrees with you. Yes. These situations with sexual abuse, they do lead to hypersexuality. And sadly for many women, they experience this as well. You're not alone in this. Many women are taught that things like objectification and sexual abuse and having sex when you don't want to have sex and being called a certain derogatory names is normal and so they accept this because why because they were not taught and are not yet aware that this is not in fact the norm for them it has been normalized and they accept this they internalize and blame themselves for these things women sadly as men are shown not to show emotion women are sure these emotions can be expressed uh, but they're responsible for everything all the bad things that happen it's the woman's fault this is a literally a societal message that unfortunately for some reason uh, that for some reason this is taught to women this is not true women are not responsible for your meeting your every need women have just as many rights uh, as men do. We're humans. We're half the human race. We don't deserve things like sex trafficking and ra being raped just because we wear certain clothes or we act in a certain way. There is, uh, especially since we're on Twitch, there is this perception of some women on Twitch, uh, hot tub streaming women, etc., who... Um, they're like, oh, they're asking for it or, or whatever. They brought this upon themselves because whatever. This is not true. Many of these women, believe it or not, especially the hypersexual ones, if you delve deep enough into their past, into their inner child, they are women who have been sexually abused. They are women who have been taught that they are always only ever going to be seen as an object. Gold diggers become gold diggers because there are no men in their childhood to teach them that they are actually worth more than money. Does that make sense? If those women saw their mothers being paid the same as their fathers, if those gold diggers saw that they are not an object and in fact are to be respected, they would not be trying to gold dig for security financially. 
if I make one dollar and you make one dollar, are you going to date me just to get a dollar? I don't think so. Because you have a dollar. We're both making a dollar. We both have enough money for bread. Let's say bread is 50 cents. But if I make 10 cents and you make 90 cents, who's closer to getting to the bread? This is not right. And this is why I believe that many abusive dynamics also kind of stem from some issues with financial poverty, especially with things like gold digging. And I actually wrote a rap about that, which I'm happy to share with you guys if you ever want to read my writings or ramblings. But then Michael Bold says, uh, sorry, uh, Kage says, um, I had a question if you continue reading my sentence. Yes, but as a friend, you should at least bring them aware. Yes, which I answered that. Hopefully for you, Kage, correct? What is Kage's responsibility versus what is not Kage's responsibility? This is where you start. And same thing with you, Sky. What is truly my blame versus what is not truly my blame? And is my mom projecting? I don't know if you're still here, Sky. By the way, guys, I don't know who's here and who's not. So if I speak to someone who's for some reason no longer here, uh, you know, don't mind me. Um, Michael said, when we are damaged, we can only be responsible for ourselves. That's true, Michael. We cannot take on the struggles of others when we ourselves at our core damaged. Yes, this is true. Uh, and he said, always speak truth. Yes, I totally agree with that. And Kake said, yes, it makes a little too much sense. I don't know if you noticed that I do ask if it makes sense. And the reason I is because sometimes we need a little bit further explanation to get to the point of revelation. And I'm happy to do that. I have the most patience in the world when it comes to that. Because I know how long it took me to learn certain things and how many messages and in ways I needed to hear that message to understand it. So I'm happy to do that for you guys. Ray says, oh, hi. <laughs> Michael says, amazing. We can see. Wait, you, you can see me? <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm so happy to know that. Hello, guys. I, I, you can't see my hands waving, but I'm definitely waving. It, music is a bit loud. There's music playing. There was uh, Ah, okay. Sorry about the music. Uh, that was actually supposed to be my surprise for you guys uh, with the beginning scene, but that all got messed up from the stream not running. My Michael says, we can see you. Such a boomer. Oh, really? I look like a boomer with my, uh, with my, um, my Burberry shirt. I, I was trying to bling out. Let me live. Yeah, might want to turn down the music. Is is there music playing? I may be reading this chat part late. Music is a little loud, Venus. We can't hear what you're saying, Venus. Oh, no. Michael says, being a slave to my lust is a constant struggle. These boundaries were broken down, and it's hard to build them up. It really is. The thing about sexual boundaries, for those of us who have been violated, um... I think it's important to start with touch permanently. This is how I started. And you may at first be angry as I was. But I strongly recommend going through this period. Do not allow anyone to touch you for a time. Recognize when people are trying to touch you and start saying no. It doesn't matter how weak the first no's are. No, do not touch me. Please do not touch me. This is my space, that is your space. This act alone changed my life. I learned that it is not okay to be touched without your consent. Not a friendly pat, not a hug, not a kiss, not holding your hand. None of this is acceptable 
by someone you don't know and that you have not expressly told to touch you. For those of us who have been physically abused, and I'm not saying all of us have, because all of us haven't, but it is very important for those of us who have been physically abused to learn how to use that boundary. No. No, do not touch me. No, you can no longer hug me. Hello, I'm not going to give you a kiss on the cheek. These boundaries at first will be weak. We are exercising a muscle that has never been used. Literally never. We may have yelled no or screamed no when it was happening to us as a child, but as that boundary was violated, what was the silent message? Your no means nothing, right? Your no has no validation. Your no is not acceptable, right? So if as children we've learned, grown up learning this and our inner child still believes this, we have to engage in a different behavior that is very difficult. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, when I first started engaging in no, saying no to people touching me, especially strangers, I started with strangers. Why? Because that is slightly outside my circle of influence, right? We have circle of influence, strangers, uh, then distant family, friends, and then close family, relatives, your first generation family, however many people that may be, right? So by starting with strangers who try to touch you, and refuting them and calling them out, making them recognize it is not okay to touch you, you will become stronger in saying that to people closer to you. Does that make sense? By using your first weak little nose, and I love to use uh, working out references and muscle-related references, one, because I love working out, but two, because it is exactly like that. Your no without boundaries, and from growing up as a child to now, is extremely weak. Your no has often become turned into a yes against your will. This has frustrated you. This has made you extremely sad and depressed. You have a reason to be depressed. Anyone who tells you go get psychiatric help, uh, take some medication so that you're not depressed, is lying to you and hiding most likely. You have a reason to be depressed. If you were abused as a child, you have a reason to be depressed. If you're being underpaid at your job because they're overworking you, exploiting you, and underpaying you, you have a reason to be depressed. You are being emotionally abused at your job. If you are feeling depressed because you go out and you're being forced by the people around you who are getting vaccines and you're suddenly isolated because maybe you don't want the vaccine or you're waiting for more information and actual testing to come out, whatever it is, you have a reason to be depressed. I am not going to tell you, put on a happy face. I hate when people say this, and you do too. Subconsciously, you don't want people to tell you to smile when you don't want to smile. They're projecting, and that's abusive. If you don't want to smile, you don't have to smile. You don't exist for their pleasure or to make them happy by your smile. This is insulting. And rather than accepting it, the boundary is calling it out. You don't live in my body. I don't want to smile. When people tell us you should smile, you should 
move on from this. They are not us. They are not living in our bodies. They do not understand our personal experience. Yes, they could, you know, feasibly put themselves in our shoes, but if they haven't actually experienced what we're experiencing, and the, the people who tell you those kinds of things aren't experiencing it, they cannot relate to it, which is why they tell you you should be happy or you should be smiling or you should be grateful for blah, 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 blah. Yes, it is good to look on the positive side of things. Of course, I totally agree with that. But invalidating your experiences and continuing to do that as an adult after you've already been doing it your whole life, you are not going to be happy. Happiness comes from the freedom of expressing those emotions. Happiness comes from being accepted and validated even while having those emotions and still being loved. Does that make sense? Michael says, everyone is a victim in this e-girl simp cycle. Totally. I definitely agree with that. Anka says, actually, I was a gold digger in my teens because mom told me the only way I could be happy was to marry a rich man. 29 years and still not married. This message from mom was her own projection, Anka. That's what mom was raised to believe, and so she taught you that. Probably among a lot of other things because mom was very mean, right? Mom not only told you to marry a rich man, but maybe with mom being mean and giving you the lesson, marry a rich man, your inexperienced brain could have been like, well, if that rich man abuses me, at least he's a rich man. This is not right. And that's a lie. You don't deserve that. You don't need to marry a rich man. And you're not going to be happy with a rich man if he's anything like mom. And he will be, because until you become aware of why you want to fix that early relationship with mom, you'll be seeking that connection in people like mom. That reminds you of dynamics with mom. You will feel the same way that you felt with mom, and it will feel comfortable to you. But this comfort is a lie. This comfort is dangerous. Your connection with this person is a dysfunctional one. Does that make sense? Michael says, it is true that the way we present ourselves attracts certain kinds of abusive people, but the, that does not mean that these women deserve to be treated that way. Yes, I agree with that 100%. They don't deserve to be treated that way. In fact, I'll even go so far as to say that no women deserve to be treated that way. I don't care how many names uh, somebody has to call uh, whatever woman they're calling them. They do not understand the reasoning of why those women believe the things they do and therefore behave the way that they do. You don't know their core beliefs. You only see what's on the outside. Some actions. Some of them are narcissists. Some of them are liars. Some of them are gold diggers. Some of them are quote-unquote whores. Well, if you've been raised to think that your body is your only asset and yet you still need to eat like any other human, what are you going to do? If you've been raised to believe that the only way to get ahead in the world is to take advantage of others, then how are you going to treat people? Does that make sense? This blame that people shift and these names that we call other people, these are projections of false core beliefs. But if we become aware of them, that is where change happens. That is where change continues to happen and healing comes. And with healing comes a different life, different choices in mates, different choices in jobs we accept, different choices in friends and people we will allow into our lives. 
it is a big, big ball of yarn that once healed uh, and completely unraveled is literally life-changing. But it all starts with awareness. Then that's why I'm here. I hope to bring that. Sleepless Ramble says, you're, you're good on sound now. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Michael Boone says, yeah, brother. Working out is great. I often use pent-up sexual energy to work out because of my hypersexuality. Yes, that's awesome. I was put through the mental health system for years, and all it got me was a bunch of drugs that messed me up and made me emotionally sterile. It was not until starting to form a relationship with God that I started to heal. I left the medication behind. I don't recommend this not taking your medication, but medication is not your God and it cannot fix you. It might be able to help you, but you must work to fix yourself and understand yourself first. Yes, this is totally true. Uh, and I'm going to go so far as to say um, when I was diagnosed with depression and BPD all those many years ago, it's literally because I was being abused and I had a lot of reasons to be depressed. Medical, uh, taking medication, um, it does unfortunately not always lead to the effect of great happiness that you're expecting because if you're not fixing the problem, and you, to do that, you must go back to those painful traumas. I firmly believe that. Uh, and many psychiatrists and psychologists have not been through what you've been through. So they don't always have the best start at where to help from. A lot of people have told me, Venus, I, you know, I paid $600 in therapy. And I've talked to you for an hour and a half, and I've gotten more insight from you uh, and more, learned more you know, from you than I've learned in my months of therapy. <laughs> and the reason is, those therapists, yes, they've gone to school and they've studied, uh, and I've also studied much of what they have studied, but they have not been through the experience. They have not experienced firsthand and worked through their own traumas to come out of it. Some of them are psychiatrists and psychologists who are hiding from their own past. Does that make sense? So how can they help you or understand you or validate you and comfort you if they themselves have never experienced it? Or they have experienced it, but refuse to face it. Courage and strength is what leads us to be able to take the truth into an awareness and then act on it and change. Peppy SM says, thank you. I must go to bed. I'll be back soon. You're amazing. You all are. Oh, that's wonderful, Peppy. Tierna, Tierna, hi, good to see you. Welcome. Uh, Anka says, oh, absolutely, my mom had a princess mentality. Yes, and there was. it's very likely, Anka, if you look back into mom's past, you will find that mom didn't just, you know, wake up and be born with a princess mentality. She was taught that from your grandparents. Does that make sense? Mom was also a girl like you who grew up with different projections and uh, abuses of her own from your grandparents to her and lessons that she learned and one of them was marry a rich man if you want to be happy. Maybe mom, although feeling like a princess, was raised in poverty. Maybe mom put a lot of faith into finances because they maybe didn't have any or she was taught that the only way to happiness is to have finances does that make sense so we can't blame mom or try to change mom we can only use our awareness to strengthen ourselves to change 
our future. If mom sees this and then by example we lead, eh, all the better. Stormy says, hi, I don't know if this is remotely related, but I'm a high schooler and I think I like someone and I don't know if this goes with the stream. Of course it does. This is a relationships stream. We are talking about a lot of different types of relationships, uh, but you liking someone at school is definitely in line with relationships. So feel free to ask your question um, or ask for advice. I'm happy to give it. I too have been in high school and I definitely have liked someone, although it was the wrong person. In my case, I was only attracted to abusive boys. Uh, Anka says, and I think it stemmed from her father always giving her everything she wanted and no, it wasn't something she heard often. Yes, mom did probably not have boundaries. And it's interesting that it was her father giving her everything she wanted. Maybe her father had a need like we have seen uh, in others to people please and to get her approval. Maybe he didn't get approval from uh, grandma, and so he was like, well, if I'm not gonna get approval from grandma, I can get approval from my daughter by giving her everything she wants. And probably grandpa was not taught boundaries, which is why he didn't have boundaries on mom. Does that make sense? Mom growing up in this princess mentality and not ever hearing no probably made her very selfish and she maybe only thinks in terms of her own feelings and her own needs putting them above yours which if you see this often enough as a child you too will be drawn to people who do the same thing in your romantic relationships does that make sense kage says I have been called so many things from worst to best and just now I realized that they were just projecting themselves. Yes, this is exactly what it is nine times out of ten, Gage. When people call us names, especially people who have been abused and are trying to release and project that onto us, their expectations of us, what they want for us, how they think we should act, this is all them projecting. It has nothing to do with us. It could literally be somebody else in our shoes and they would be doing the same thing. So when somebody is speaking to you in this way, recognize, am I, is what they're saying really true for me now? If so, how? How is this true? And you'll find usually upon true reflection and with some love and care involved on your part, what they're saying is literally them. It's a problem they have with you. It's not your problem. You are not doing whatever it is that they think it is that you're doing. Does that make sense? You're existing and they're having a problem with this. But it's their problem. It's, it's them projecting what they expect from you, how they want you to be, what their core beliefs are onto you. And she says, wasn't something she heard often or fear. I've noticed I get mean when I'm scared of someone or a trait they have, even if they're nice. This comes from your mom, Anka, and it's wonderful that you're able to recognize this. I, th I think that goes for therapy as well. I feel like a lot of people are going to walk in and bam, fixed, and that is not the case. It is definitely not the case. Therapy is very, very lengthy process, and for some people it does not work because they don't ever truly get to the core beliefs and the upbringing that they experienced and the patterns that they are repeating which I discussed earlier subconsciously you cannot stop something happening that you don't know is happening you cannot 
get yourself out of sad situations if you don't understand that this isn't supposed to be happening to you, like situations with sexual abuse or physical abuse. If it has been normalized for you, then you're going to think, well, this is just how it is. This is how men treat women. This is not true. That is a lie. Michael says, you, you're anti-science. Are you saying that all these professional authorities are a bunch of nonsense? You must blindly trust the intelligentsia, yeah? ignore the fact they are human like us, and often do not listen to their own advice. Ha ha ha. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely not anti-science, but yes, I, I, it's so funny, Venus. You always say, does that make sense? I do that all the time, and my friends make so much fun of me. Yeah, I don't think, um, they probably make fun of you because they probably don't understand where it stems from necessarily. For me, when I say, does that make sense? I know where I'm coming from. It already makes sense to me. But I say it because I don't dare assume that just because I say it, you understand it. We do that way too much. We say things to people and we don't really say them in a way checking if they actually understood what we were saying. And in the way that we're saying it, you can say something to someone and think they understand it the way you do, but they don't. Anka says, from what I've heard about my grandparents, they were truly amazing. My nan would take in homeless people and kit them out with new clothes and food. I think my mama was just a bit of a bad egg, but obviously I'm not in her head, so I couldn't say. Yeah, connecting with mom on that level might not be possible to find out. Uh, it could be possible that mom was a bad egg. I'm not going to say that it isn't that. But what I want you to definitely understand is that you are not a bad egg just because maybe mom was mean to you or made you think you were. Why be the confused? Chuck says, hi, hi. So I don't know if this is related at all. But when I was younger, my mom used to tell me that my opinion doesn't matter and I shouldn't even have one in the first place. This is classic emotional abuse. And yes, it's related. And all of this, just so you guys know, anything related to relationships, and that's all of our different types of relationships, is what we are here for. Uh, and I hope when we go into the share that you guys understand that you can share anything. It doesn't have to necessarily be related only to breakups or romantic relationships. Our family relationships and family dynamics that we were raised in have affected us profoundly. And to become free from the things that we have learned is to be able to talk about those things as we're doing now, to share awareness and experiences that we have learned so that others can learn from them, as well as support each other in expressing these new behaviors. For instance, Sky. Now we know Sky is having issues with her mom at home and she blames her. Obviously, in our server, we're not going to engage in blame with Sky because we now understand that this has become a trigger for her. This negatively affects her and this is something that could lead her if it continues on without her using boundaries it's going to be with her romantic relationships and we don't want that same thing for kage we understand okay kage has a problem with boundaries how can we help that kage needs to see us saying no to certain things to understand that he is now in an environment where no is just as accepted as yes Michael is in a situation where he's dealing with the, the process of his healing. He has had these abuses, but he's still struggling with the hows, uh, the day-to-day, -day, if you will, of how do I love myself? How do I express these boundaries uh, in, in a sexual way? How do I... Um, go from the point where I am now, which I believe is the end of my journey, 
to the where I want to be. We're going to go through that process with Michael. But we, because he shared, we know this now. And we can support him in this journey. Or each of us can support each other in this journey because we shared these things. Because we know these things. And obviously we cannot teach things that we don't know. So I am going to teach the things I do know so that we can practice them together. And your mom telling you that your opinion doesn't matter has likely led you to be in situations where you often don't offer your opinion, which is valuable and is necessary in many situations. But you may have fear of sharing. You may have become a people pleaser, always you know, saying the right thing for the approval of others, feeling like you cannot express your true opinion. And I want you to know that you can. I want you to know that your opinion does matter. Everyone's opinion matters. We choose, however, which opinion we are going to take and which opinion we are not going to take. So let's take, for example, your mom. She told you your opinion doesn't matter. That's her opinion. So you can choose to say, do I still believe? Will I still choose to believe what mom said about my opinion? Because it's one thing to grow up with that. But now as you get older, it's your choice. You get to choose. Am I going to accept this opinion or not? Does that make sense? You still have a choice regardless of what mom says. Today, tomorrow, and the future. For other people and anyone in your close circle, in fact, even strangers who have just told you your opinion matters, who I'm telling you, yes, your opinion matters, now you choose. Now you can say, am I going to still hold on to the core belief that my mom gave me when I was younger? Or am I going to choose to grow up believing and knowing from experience, which you're experiencing with us right now, that my opinion does matter? What I have to say does matter. Mom maybe had a reason to invalidate me, but that doesn't mean that it was true. Mom maybe needed to project on me when she would say that because she was taught that, but is that true for me today? Does that make sense, YB? Also, welcome, YB. I don't think I said welcome. Anka says, your opinion matters. You matter. And YB said, thank you. That means a lot. Auto Mod said, I will allow it post to, uh, yeah, I will allow this. Okay. Stormy said, um, oh, it's YB said, thank you for your feedback. And then Ray said, everyone processes and understands things differently. Yes, Ray, that's very, very true. And we shouldn't assume that they're processing and understanding things exactly like we are. And this is why I say, does that make sense? I do it because I want other people to understand what I'm saying. I desire communication and so often they don't understand. Yes, and sometimes we need to clarify that. Uh, but that's a choice. We don't always even have to clarify that. If they want to choose not to understand it uh, or they simply can't understand it after a certain number of temps, attempts, you do not need to keep making them understand that because then you're engaging in control issues and we cannot control them. So at that point, we just kind of have to accept it. Kage said, literally only had one hour of sleep and I have two hours to sleep before it's morning. I should go to my job, but so worth it anyway. I think I learned enough lessons today, so I'm going to bed. Bye. Oh, that's so sweet, Kage. I'm so happy to hear that. Good night, Kage. Night, night, Kage. Yes, all of us are saying good night. 
Yes, Stormy said, uh, oh, I skipped one, sorry. Uh, Michael said, the fact that you are here searching, Anka, means that you are not bad. You are on the path to healing and goodness. And yes, Anka, I see that as well. Anka says, thank you, Michael. I've done a lot of bad in the past, but I want to make up for the wrongs I've done through life. This is wonderful, Anka. So many people don't even get to this point. You should be proud of yourself. There, there, none of us is perfect. There is no manual, you know, on how to raise a child even, which is why I always say, you know, yes, we can unlearn the things, the bad things we learned from our parents, but engaging in blame with them, holding on to anger and bitterness with them, it doesn't help us. And holding them accountable for their actions does help us. But learning boundaries with others in our present and practicing those is what puts us in life change mode. And this is something that I believe you can do, Anka, and that you will be doing. Believing that you have done a lot of things bad in the past can lead you to having feelings of guilt and shame, which can really spiral you down into depression but some things were to be guilty of and you can work on changing those things but you do not need to hold on to the guilt and shame and i hope that i can help you with that um, and can move past that what you're doing now making up for the wrongs you've done in life that's a very, very noble thing. And a lot of people, unfortunately, do not ever get to that point. So for me, I, I would say I'm proud of you for doing that. And it's not easy to own up to those things. Michael says, of course, we all love you and want you to see you succeed. Yes, exactly. We are all here. Uh, this is, I allow, we'll post it to chat. Yes, I want to allow. Okay, and Stormy says, and I don't want my family to feel like I left them out even though they're pu trying to push me to be social and saying it's okay to spend time with others. I don't know for sure if I said boy because I don't know my feelings. I read others' feelings and leave my behind. This is something, Stormy, that we're taught in childhood. And it may have been taught to you already. But leaving your feelings behind and trying to put others' feelings first is only going to lead you to depression and unhappiness. People pleasing is one of the most destructive ways, unfortunately, that we children of abuse emotional and or uh, physical is a detriment to us we are are taught that if we don't people please we are not worthy if people are not approving of us we're not worth anything and this is simply not not true you should not be leaving your feelings behind this will not help you because if you keep, if you don't want to be social, I don't think you should be social. If they're trying to push you to put on a happy face uh, and, and be social when you're not ready to be social, this is not healthy for you and you can have a boundary with them that tells them that it's fine that they believe that and that that's their opinion because it is their opinion that you should be social pushing you however is controlling and this is wrong and you need to point this out to them in a way that is safe for you and still loving to them obviously you don't want to engage in verbal abuse and start raising your voice and yelling you can simply say i understand your opinion I understand you feel you want the best for me and being social will be that. I'm not ready to do that, but when I am, I'll let you know and you can help me. 
They obviously want to feel like they're helping, but that help is becoming control. There's a fine line, Stormy, between protection and control. Remember that. Anka says, add Stormy, in my experience, trying to make everyone happy and putting their feelings above my own buried me out massively to the point I can't help anyone. Exactly. And this is what I don't want for you, Stormy, and what I don't want for Kage as well. Having boundaries will stop people-pleasing in its tracks. Being strong enough to express those boundaries, you need support to do this. And I'm happy to have a Psycho Kensho, who's our moderator, type in exclamation point discord if you want to join the discord for that i'm happy to help you with learning more about boundaries and i do have an entire section in the discord about boundaries and what they are but we can work on those together as a group wabi says one thing that my mom did that made me feel really bad was a poem i had found to a school assignment and it meant a lot to me as it mentioned topics i struggle with and I had to draw something that represented the poem. I've actually had this exact experience while being in my English class. Once I showed it to her, she took a photo, posted it on Snapchat, with the caption being something around the lines of, This poem is powerful and meant a lot to me and my son. Thank you. When I was the one who showed it to her and drew the picture, it made me feel forgotten. Yeah. I could see totally why that is. I definitely, definitely can see why you would feel in invalidated in that situation. I, and she did. She did leave you out of it. I would even venture to ask her why. Why did she feel like leaving you out? The poem being powerful, obviously the picture is for the poem. I would be curious to know the answer to that, YB. She did feel like it was something to show off, or she didn't. She wouldn't have posted it onto Snapchat. But invalidating you in the process, this is not a good pattern. And I bet if we look deep enough into these things that your mom is doing, we may find seeds of emotional abuse which i think we touched on in another stream but i'm not sure and i don't want to call out the things that you shared there um but we can talk more about that as well stormy says my first message is being checked by a mod oh okay so there's uh because of this is the nature of this stream is advice and especially relationships trolls will be gathering from everywhere to come in here and type uh, derogatory things insult us for our shares and all this kind of stuff so there are keywords that have been banned in here and one of your words in there may have been mistaken for one of those keywords that's what that means so you know stormy but i have allowed the message and I actually just read it. Ray says, I'm going to go. Good night, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Yes, Ray. Thank you. Thank you for coming. YB says, good night. And Stormy says, good night. Michael says, I am very tired emotionally, but I look forward to going into this community with time. God bless and I love all of you. With time, I will learn to love myself. And when I can love myself, then I can really love you guys. And this is so true, Michael. Thank you for coming, Michael. And also sharing all of this. All of you for sharing. Uh, this is so true. When we truly learn what love is, we can actually give it to others in a way where we are not expecting any approval we don't have to prove ourselves and we don't care if they give it back to us anka says yb it's not fun when you feel like your hard work isn't acknowledged yes it's terrible 
this is the second experience that 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 has happened with YB, and probably more. Nighty night, Michael. Yes. Uh, Stormy says, I want to be social, but I created this thing in my head where I have to spend the same amount of time with everyone. This is not true, Stormy. Let's think about where this comes from. Did you have a situation with your mom or dad and siblings where you feel like time was spent with one more than the other? Let's think about that. Because if you have, that might lead you to have this core belief now about equal time being spent with everyone. That you do not have to do that. You do not have to spread yourself thin where you don't want to. You do not have to spend time with anyone that you don't want to. And everyone's time has a certain quality to it. I'll give you an example. Some of us have friends that we talk to every day, and those are our friends, right? Others of us have friends who are long distance who maybe we don't talk to every day. Maybe we only see them or talk to them once a month or twice a month, but that doesn't change the quality of the time that we spend with them. Does that make sense? Even if that time is less, let's say we spend an hour in one place or 25 minutes in another place and three hours in another place, all depending upon feeling, needs of our friends, etc., and what we're able to give while having boundaries, we choose what time we're going to spend with people and how much and all of it is valid because we're giving our time and it is worth something and respecting their time which is why i wanted to make it here at eight o'clock is worth something too if we say i'm gonna come at eight o'clock and we show up at eight forty-five, we don't want them to think that their time is not worth anything to us this is something that some of us engage in and i was guilty of this until my friend created a boundary with me and she said I tell you I'm gonna see you at a certain time I show up at that time you tell me you're gonna see see me at a ter certain time and you flake on me you cancel you show up late right I used to do this but she drew a boundary you can keep doing that but I'm no longer going to schedule time to see you then. This was wonderful. I was able to change when she did this. I had a choice. Am I going to maybe lose her friendship by continuing not to respect her time? Or am I going to change and accept the responsibility of the time that I give her? This is one example of a boundary. And that one, in that case, was put on me. I needed that boundary in order to change, to understand the respecting of someone else's time. My time was never respected, so I, I didn't respect her time. But because she gave me consequence and she put a boundary on me, I then had a choice. A beautiful thing. I love consequences. Boundaries and consequences leads to happiness, my friends. YB says, I haven't talked to anyone directly about my feelings and I'm too scared to talk to my mom about things that I'm struggling with and ask her to get me help so I think she thinks I'm fine. She might think you're fine. And also, if she's invalidating you in these ways, I could see why you wouldn't feel comfortable talking to her, YB. Uh, she is a kind of silently sending you the message, you know, uh, well, you'll be okay type of thing. But I think that although it may be hard to talk to her about these things that you're struggling with, take some of the advice that I gave to uh, Michael and the others. When I was talking about uh, uh, when we're physically or sexually abused, you can use this new boundary 
with people outside of your circle of influence with mom and talk to those thing to those people about those things first right start there and become comfortable with using that muscle expressing those harder feelings once you do you can then go to the inner circle which is outer family members and friends and then finally mom does that make sense practice with the things on the outside of your circle of influence to be able to become strong with the inside of your circle of influence and i hope to support you in this journey with that Stormy says, my brother would always leave us and never spend time with us. Okay. And you probably wanted to spend time with your brother. And you probably wondered, why doesn't he spend the same time with you uh, that he was spending with these other people, right? So now here you are, silently assuming and believing this is how it should be with everyone you have to spend equal time with everyone if you're going to be social but this is false this comes from that feeling that your brother gave you this is not true for you with everyone repairing and understanding with awareness deeply why you, when your brother did that and didn't spend time with you will lead you to the freedom of understanding why you don't have to spend equal time with everyone. Does that make sense? Let's unpack that, uh, so to speak, together. How did my brother make me feel? How did I feel when my brother would leave us? How did I feel about myself when he would not spend time with us? What was I thinking? Then you can take that a step further once you unpack that and you can move on to, is this true for me today with my social relationships? Why do I feel like if I don't spend equal time with these so all of these social relationships that I'm being like my brother? Does that make sense? Because having this awareness of your brother is a deep, deep thing compared to these other newer relationships that you, yes, you want to be social, but you feel pressure. Work first with the idea, the ideas and feelings that you got from your brother leaving and not spending time with you. Fritana, welcome. Hello, Rosary Love. Say Baku. Oh. YB says, my brother does that too, Stormy. Yes. Anka says, my bestie loves his me time. I had to learn to actually leave him alone for our friendship to progress. Personal space is boundaries learned. Yes, it is. And sometimes we need to teach that to others. Right? Uh, in race situation. Uh, basically, there needed to be a boundary placed on those specific friends. If you're going to behave in this way, that's fine, but I'm going to leave. With my friend, it was, you. I feel like you don't value my time. So, since you're going to continue to choose to be late, I'm going to schedule times with you less. We're not going to schedule times. If I'm available, great. And if you don't see me, then fine. I didn't want that. So I said, no, you're right. I will respect the time. I will be on time. And if I'm going to flake, I will call you and I will let you know first. I would flake and I wouldn't even call. How rude. How disrespectful to do to someone you claim to love. Someone you're calling a friend. It was wonderful that she taught me this by placing these boundaries on me. Because she changed me. We can change others by placing boundaries on them. 
Yes, we're afraid to say no in the beginning, and this is totally understandable. But when we do, and as it gets stronger, people all around us change. When I would tell people who tried to touch me not to touch me, and I had the freedom of saying, do not touch me, instead of blindly believing as a core belief, my body is apparently a tool to be used and discarded. Uh, my body is just part of some transaction. I have to do something to be worthy of getting love. Being able to tell someone, do not touch me with conviction, which at first it wasn't with conviction. And being able to say that and place a boundary on them enables them obviously to choose whether they're going to respect my boundary, but... The wonderful chain reaction is that they realize they can tell somebody that and it will be respected. It's a beautiful thing. Boundaries are a beautiful thing. Please join the Discord if you want to learn more about boundaries. It is something I am happy to teach uh, and, and make videos. I will be making videos on that. Stormy says, I have... I have never had a true friend. I think I finally found one, but all my previous ones used me for grades and for them to vent to me, but would push me out when I tried to talk about my feelings. Yes, Stormy, they were selfish. They were very, very selfish. But now you do have a community. There is no one pushing you out or trying to just talk about themselves. Uh, and if you find that that's happening, I'm giving you a place to learn boundaries so that you can say no to that behavior. And then they have a choice. They will choose to respect it or they get a consequence. And that consequence is not talking to you. Uncle Wolf said, you have this community now, Stormy. We'll listen. Exactly. Exactly, Stormy. And uh, when we go into the chat, actually, it may be too late to go into the chat, but if you are all still willing, I will be opening up the stage for all of you to speak. Uh, Stormy says, another thing I might need to say is I have OCD, and if I don't do something, something bad will happen. That makes a lot of sense, Stormy. There may be reasons why you feel like you need control over a certain area. And that likely stems also from childhood. I know that I keep going back to this concept of inner child and the, the concept of these family dynamics building, you know, our core beliefs around us. But it is because that is the truth. When we have things like BPD that they, you know, that they uh, diagnose us with or OCD or whatever it is, these things are umbrellas for things that have happened to us that have caused us to exhibit behaviors in our early lives to protect ourselves, to rationalize bad things that have happened to us, to have a sense of control over even one small environment. Could be organizing my desk every single day in a very specific way and not be able, being able to leave my house until the desk is organized. Maybe feeling like I have a little control over just that one spot can get me through the day. Right, Stormy? This is where we go in our heads. If I can do this, if I can control just this, then I'm okay because I can't control everything else. And then Stormy says, uh, sorry, not Stormy. Tainted Duck says, no one can tell you your body is a tool. They do. They have shown that in action, right? By violating my body, uh, by the media telling me I need a man to uh, be happy, or by reading books and being in class and seeing the dynamics between, you know, students to students and other girls, as well as watching my mother be objectified 
all of these are silent lessons as a female for me personally and I'm sure I'm not the only one that I have gotten that made me believe my body was a tool that I am not worth anything if I'm not attractive right I know that this is a concept that is not for you know foreign to twitch because there is so much rampant objectification on this website and maybe other women you know they they may accept that in their streams but i do not accept that for women in my streams because i'm staunchly against this am i staunchly against the men who engage in this no they don't know right they don't know until there's a consequence then they can choose accept it and now i learn respect or no i refuse to accept it and then i can choose a boundary well if you refuse to respect me i'm not going to be around you right i don't have to be around them we don't need the approval of anyone when we grow up we think that we do and so anyone who approves of us or anything we can do to get that approval we try it right because the silent message from our parents especially in abusive uh, upbringings was that we're not worth anything and we have to prove ourselves or people please to stay safe all of these messages our lies that we are here to unlearn with each other hopefully but obviously I don't consider myself to be all and all on the information if I don't know something I will lead you to where the information is because this is not about me I have done the work I have moved through these things I have been the troll I have befriended the trolls I have been the victim and I have accepted victimhood and given it up and learn boundaries. You are not a victim when you have boundaries because you allow people the choice to behave badly with the understanding that you do not have to accept it. Does that make sense? Anka says, Stormy24, I had a lot of OCD tendencies. I was never officially diagnosed, but I managed to overcome a lot of it with meditation. That's wonderful, Anka. That's really hard to do. Uh, so hearing that is really wonderful. Meditation and also using um, inspiring uh, motiv motivation, motivational messages and things like this helps a lot in the early days of coming out of pain coming through awareness into okay now i'm self-reflecting and wow there is a lot of trauma and i'm sad having those motivational messages to hold on to while we're going through that process as well as support as well as constant influx of information to continue our awareness is where the strength building starts and it looks like, Anka, you have made so many steps, even just from what you've shared tonight. It's great. It's wonderful and inspiring to hear. And YB says, too. That's amazing. I'm proud of you, Anka Wolf. Uh, YB, thank you. I still have a lot of learning to still do. Yes, but you're not alone in that. We literally all do. We literally all do. Uh, there's a moderated message about... In cells, Lollier says, I will allow it, Lollier. Um, what is this one? Auto mod held for a reason. YB says, one of my friends I dearly love and they are dealing with a lot lately. And it feels like all they talk to me for is to vent. And I always say yes. Oh, YB, I know where this is going. This is from people pleasing uh, instincts, YB. This is a lack of boundaries. You always saying yes is not going to make you happy and it is not going to 
help them either in the long term, if that makes sense. The, um, I I just lost the rest of that sentence. But, uh, give me one second, YB, I apologize. I won't see the tendencies overcome with meditation. Thank you for your patience with me with that, what I'm reading. Uh, Stormy says, some of mine is checking pillows, doors, locks, saying I love you and good night to parents and random that happened through the day. Yes, yes, I can understand that, Stormy. Uh, Anka said, the media is terrible. The male gaze has ruined so many good movies for me. Yes, the media in general. Don't get me started on romanticized abuse movies. And yes, ladies, The Notebook is one of them. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. That's for another stream. We will have a, 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 a ladies discussion regarding the male gaze and uh, objectification. Yeah. Stormy says, how do you know if you like someone? Well, comfortable, happy, laugh a lot, and I feel like I can lean on them. Even though I don't talk to them much, I'm very shy and closed off. Okay. That sounds possibly like you may like that person um but feeling like you can lean on them do you mean like for support and to be able to talk to them or spend time with them and it's okay that you're shy and closed off uh you don't you don't have to, you know, always put on a happy smile, even though the world will tell you that. Uh, Anga said, how do you feel when you're around them? Uh -huh. And Anga said, you're a survivor. Yes, yes. Uh, this is the one YB was saying. I don't personally have anything OCD like that, but I do have stims, and I recently found out what was some of my stims. So I told some of my friends today, so they just knew what to expect sometimes. And as I was explaining to my partner what my stims were, they said that those just seemed normal, and it made me feel bad because it was invalidating. It was invalidating you, and I think you should tell your partner that. Uh, that was definitely an invalidating statement, and it was also a kind of ins insensitive one because you didn't have to share that, but you chose to. Uh, and I would, I would talk to them about that. If you want to know exactly what are some things you can say with them to bring that up, uh, I'm happy to go through that with you. But you should. You should talk to them about that. That's really awesome, Anka says. I mean, the feeling of wanting to see them more is normally a good indicator. Yes, wanting to see them more, Stormy, is definitely a good indicator that you like them. And or wanting to spend a lot of time with them or extra time with them. And Stormy says, I have bad sleepwalking at least four times a week and I am violent in my sleep and I can't figure out why I do this. This is another thing from the subconscious that is expressing itself in your sleep. Uh, many things, many things that we do are sometimes driven by the subconscious mind. We don't necessarily know why we're doing them um, or if what we're doing is wrong because it feels normal to us. It has been uh, normalized uh, in our eyes. And this violence in your sleep uh, would maybe be something to look at keeping a dream journal. If you don't know yet, if you dream, just by starting to keep a dream journal and it can be online that you don't have to like actually write or anything uh write stuff down but you can start by keeping a dream journal so you have an idea of what it is that you're dreaming about and maybe being able to unlock some secrets of feelings that you're having before bed that could also be leading to this while you're sleeping not the sleepwalking part, but the violence in your sleep. Uncle said, so my friend would react to numbers, E numbers and certain sugars and always made her sleepwalking worse. Yes. That's good that you can share that, Anka, with Stormy. That 
DM Jock says, Normally for me, if someone is venting to me and wants me to say something, I will give them my thoughts, but I won't give them a straight yes or no answer because I don't feel right weighing in on something I don't have a full picture of. I think that's great, Jox, that you do that. Uh, I think more people should do that. So many people are, you know, willing to give their opinion without necessarily even putting themselves in the other person's shoes. Anka, Anka said, YB, I always try to find another of describing how I'm feeling to someone. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm very sorry, but I'm not actually sure what a stem is. Uh-huh. And Stormy says, I want to be close to them. Yeah. Okay. That definitely is sounding like you like that person. What I would do is I would caution something that most people probably wouldn't. But this is a relationship stream and I'm fine with if you don't choose to take my opinion or not. If you're liking this person, many times we are attracted to people and we don't ever stop to think about why. Try to, while you're in these early romantic feelings, think about why am I attracted to this person? What is it about this person versus another person that I know that makes me feel comfortable and why? How does this comfort that I have with this person, how is it similar to an early family dynamic I may have had with one parent or another? Ask these questions to yourself. Find the answers and you will know if you are connecting with this person in a possibly dysfunctional way that will only sadly repeat your childhood traumas and you will lead to unhappiness, or if you're connecting with this person in a healthy way. DM Drugs, uh, Anka says, I always ask questions. Questions can deduct so much in a conversation. Yes, Anka, definitely. We need to ask questions. We need to get into the habit sometimes even of if somebody says something, we repeat what they said to us to make sure that that's even what they said and to let them know that we understood what they said and uh, YB clarifies uh, that's totally fine I personally didn't know what stimming was until a few months ago so I'm gonna try to explain it as best as I can YB says stimming is basically something you do could be words or movements you do to express emotions most people have stims from what I know but people with autism ADHD or such have more noticeable stims. I flap my hands. It helps express me being happy and excited. And Anka says, okay, that makes sense. I think I would try to explain to people that yes, neurotypical people do things like that, but it's a bit different for as it's kind of like a trigger, uh, not just a moment of expression, if that makes any sense. And yes, it does, Anka. But yes, I... I think, uh, Stormy, for you with that situation, it would definitely be wise to question what it is that's attracting you about this person. And for all of you, uh, and Anka, eventually when you get through this breakup, um, which I, I believe you will, and you meet someone else, I think you should engage in this question asking as well. You may be swept up in the feelings of lust, love, infatuation, etc. But you have control over that. If you engage in those questions, you will take yourself out of that feeling and actually be able to see things from a sense of clarity. A lot of people do not do this and then they get stuck in relationships that are unhealthy. I don't want that for any of you. Stormy says, I'm an overthinker and thought some of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I mean, literally, I think we, we all have triggers. Not all of us have OCD specifically or uh, use these specific stims, obviously. But so many of us have triggers. 
Some of us are aware of what those triggers are, but many of us are not aware of what those triggers are. Our parents, our grandparents, are definitely not aware of what their triggers are. And so they have never told us, which means we most likely have stepped on them a couple times. Stormy says, except the last one, I don't understand it. I have never dated someone and I've never been in a relationship. That's fine. Stormy, this is new ground for you. Uh, even better uh, with liking this person and asking these questions is that this can set you up for asking these types of questions and looking, um, you know, sort of from the outside in at what it is exactly that you're attracted to in this person and why you're attracted to this person and how it relates to your past and your childhood. There is some specific questions that you can ask yourself uh, and I will also note those in the um, relationships uh, what we will be breakups uh, section but I will at mention you there. I don't know if you have joined the Discord, but if you have, I will at mention you there so that you can specifically use those questions to lead you into the self-reflection process as well. I have some triggers to stimming, and it normally happens when I'm overwhelmed or happy and stressed, and very rarely happens to sounds. Interesting. Very interesting. Stimming is actually something that I'm just learning about today. And it seems to be very fascinating and something I would like to learn more about. So thank you, YB, uh, for sharing that definition with us. And also Stormy for sharing that you have them as well. Because now uh, YB doesn't need to feel alone in that experience. And if you have are both in the Discord, we can talk about those as a group. When are you feeling them? If you need to uh, have support in a certain time for something, you can turn to each other as opposed to having to go to maybe someone in family uh, or, and or revert to a family dynamic that already wasn't healthy because you're, these, these things have been created from the family dynamic, if that makes sense. <laughs> Uncle Wolf says, my triggers are generally quite destructive, unfortunately. Mine were too, Anka. I definitely can understand that. <laughs> no judgments here. Uh, YB says, it makes me happy knowing I'm not the only one stormy, so thank you. Exactly. And this is why I love these shares, because we find that we're not alone in this sea of confusion. That out there is someone that we can connect with who will be able to relate to our experiences. Maybe they can help us, maybe they cannot. But at the very least, knowing that we're not alone can stave off things like depression, self-loathing. If you are surrounded by people who are experiencing what you're experiencing, Yes, Anka, you're a team. All, all of you can be self-loathing together, right? But eventually, one of you is going to have a change of perspective. And we'll share it with the team. And then the team has a change of perspective. This is the kind of chain effect that builds us all up together. As uh, not just us, our group in Discord, but as a could be a society uh, as a as a nation i mean the, these kinds of things yes i could be thinking too far you know out there maybe not as a nation right away but it starts with one of us to build to two of us that's why i always say even if i can just help one person i've done my job i'm done i i my stream was not wasted and if I have helped two people, even better, you know, opening eyes and changing lives and hopefully saving some lives, that's the reason I'm on Twitch. I don't mock the other people it just, you know, gaming or, you know, having pet streams or even doing hot tub streams. All of this 
you know, I don't feel it's my my place to say what they should be doing or shouldn't be doing, but I personally wanted to bring this to Twitch. to ha- For everyone to have a place where they could feel validated, where they can share these harder uh, times and the harder experiences that we all have, even though some of us are hiding them, together. And by using my experience, which I have a lot of, and all the things that I've learned, I can actually help people through those things to get to a better place, a place of empowerment, a place of strength. And this brings happiness for so many of us whose, vi- whose, whose boundaries have been violated, who have been put down by others, who have been given the message that they have no worth unless something, something. Anka says, oh, sorry, YB says, uh, oh, sorry, Stormy says, I move or hit things or talk a lot with my hands involuntary. I know some hand talking is not only stimming. I couldn't talk, I couldn't talk tell I was seven so that's how I help myself to communicate I think that's wonderful Stormy I don't think that's something that you should be ashamed of and anybody who makes you feel ashamed of it they're just projecting YB says this makes me really happy thank you all I've never opened up so much with someone before I feel so comfy here I'm so glad this isn't the uh, quote unquote usual VTuber comfy stream because I'm definitely not talking about comfy things but there's love here there's acceptance here and I think those things are much more valuable than any type of you know great music playing and uh, just you know, commonly observing and basically ignoring the things that are happening in someone's life. Putting on the mask. We don't wear masks here. Yes, I'm a VTuber, but I'm giving you really hard messages with the sweetest face I can. Uh, Anka says, I do that all the time. If I'm talking, I'm moving my hands. Yeah, see, Stormy, you're not alone in this. Stormy says, I don't know if it's a stem, but I jerk randomly sometimes out of nowhere. Um, It might be, but I can definitely say I jerk randomly sometimes out of nowhere too. So I can relate to you on that. Anga says, YB, there will never be any judgment from me. I have never been an angel and it will be hypocritical of me too. That's beautiful, Anka, and very true. That's Stormy. She says, I try not to worry too much about it's considered a charismatic trait (laughs) yes is it is that what they call it that's pretty cool uh dm jocks is replying to anka saying i do agree that questions can help but even then we are only getting one side of the story that's true jocks so it would help to know their position and what it is that's bothering them but i like knowing as many sides as i can before putting myself on a side yes i definitely can relate to that jocks Stormy says, a stim I wish I didn't have is chucking my phone involuntary. Yeah, that kind of sucks, huh? Do you have a lot of broken, do you end up with a lot of broken phones? I could see why that, why that would get annoying. Anka says to Drox, ah, but you can play devil's advocate gently, of course. <laughs> that is true, uh, Drox, you definitely can. And I don't know if this is necessarily just a Libra thing or if you guys believe in astrology, but maybe Drox is a Libra. He sounds like. Oh, Drox, what is a stim? YB actually told us earlier in the chat. YB, I don't know if you want to paste that one again. Uh, if not, I can, I can just uh, copy and paste it. Or just tell you since I found it, Jonks. Uh, YB says, Stimming is basically something you do, could be words or movements, that you do to express emotions. Most people have stims from what she knows, but he or she, 
people from form one stem no stem no but people with autism adhd or such have more noticeable stems and then yb went on to talk about what his stem was right yb am i close there uh aspec free says i can't believe this knowledge is free for real yeah i don't charge for this uh this is something that i struggled to learn and uh it took me a long time so so many years but um i don't believe people should have to pay for this i don't believe that people should have to pay for anything regarding validation or someone having compassion on them or even listening to them um this is something that we should have been given all of us as kids and we weren't instead we were silenced and as men you know taught to only show one acceptable emotion and so many other things uh, uh, even yeah we all we all deserve love we all deserve acceptance and validation uh, we all deserve to have our boundaries respected by other people. We haven't. And I would never make somebody pay for that. I want to give that freely because coming through never having that and then having that, creating that for myself and changing my life to, you know, to be where I am now, uh, which is definitely a miracle because I probably should be dead, but... To get to this place i want to give that freely and i uh, put all my time towards that wabi says sometimes i struggle to talk and once a day it happened oh and one day it happened during school so i use my phone notes to talk to people instead of verbally talking and my friends were really nice about it which i enjoyed they never fully understood why i didn't want to talk although it's more something i can't control that's wonderful that you had that support that day YB, because it strengthened you to understand that there is people who will respect that. And that experience is what showed you that. These experiences that we have had uh, in our family dynamics uh, that were not healthy, we can unlearn them by, as Michael said earlier, looking at the truth looking at the good and being able to learn to love ourselves these types of experiences that you had with acceptance and validation of your experience at school is very important and i wish more people had those experiences it's great to know that you have friends like that keep those people close stormy said that's why i have an otter box Ah, I don't think I know what an otter box is, I have to admit. Wybe says to Stormy, I believe that's more of a tick instead of a stem. Ah, uh, yes. Tick is unlike a stem from what I know, although I'm not 100% sure. Yes, I'm not sure either, to be honest. I don't know if I stem or if I have a small case of Tourette's. It could be. And then YB says, yes, you are. Uh, Stormy said, or a tick. Ace V said, you should set up subscribe so I can subscribe. I don't know how to do that yet. If anybody can help me with that, um, that would be wonderful. I, I don't know how subscriptions work or even the buttons yet. Uh, I'm kind of figuring this all out as I go, which is why my stream may not look as, you know, quote unquote cool or bling bling as other people's do that I, that I love. Um, but it's because I'm literally learning as I go, but I'm not letting that stop me from sharing life-saving information. YB says, yes, Tourette's are where you have a motor tick and verbal tick for more than a year. So most likely it is a tick. Oh, okay. Anka says, it sounds like you went into a mute state. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does sound like that. And YB says uh, uh, he has to do more research into that. And Stormy says, I have had the throwing 
the throwing one for about three years. It only happens once a week, so it's not too terrible. Well, that's good. And it, do you can you throw it in a certain direction, or does it just randomly happen? Jock says, I think one person I see on Twitch who is a big streamer who has Tourette's is Sweet Anita. I am 100% spelling the name wrong, but I look it up. That's, that's Klein Jocks. I think for subs work, you need to reach affiliate. Oh, yeah, this is only my second stream. I'm sure I'm so far from affiliate. I haven't checked, but I, I, I don't even know. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many hours I would need for that. Anka says, it could be caused by a million things. Normally disassociation. Dissociation. Nothing bad happens to me all the time. Mm -hmm. And nothing bad happens to any of us all the time. Uh, thankfully. Oh, Rambo says you'll get subs once you hit affiliate. If you need help with tech stuff, feel free to... You're wonderful, Rambles. I love that you have all this tech information. Thank you so much for offering that. Uh, if I do hit affiliate, um, that's not really my goal, but I, I guess I do hope that people can subscribe. Um, if I do get to that point, I would love to ask you uh, some more questions about that. And even the alerts or how I can stop for what happened tonight from ever happening again. <laughs> YB says, you should definitely do research into ticks, Tourette's, and stimming. It's quite, I am, I will. After tonight's conversation, I definitely will. I'm so glad that you shared this. Um, Stormy said, I watch her, but I don't want to say I have Tourette's because a lot of people fake it to get attention, so I try to refrain from moving involuntarily. But when I do that, mm -hmm, the involuntary gets motion strong. Yeah. Mm. could or couldn't be that's something maybe to think about but i don't think um i don't think you should be ashamed of saying it if you do uh and maybe there are people who fake it to get attention but you know that's not you so you don't have to worry about that uh being um your definition you don't have to take on someone else's definition of you stormy it's random but sometimes i can feel it build up so i can prevent it some oh that's good and yb says yeah i get that but suppressing takes if you have them can only make them worse yes yeah that's why i don't think you should uh, you should suppress it and i think if you if you say you have it if the, there will be people who will be accepting and understanding of of that and I would keep those people close. Marky, hello and welcome. How are you? I didn't see you there. <laughs> I like that little emoji. YB says, that's why I don't like to say I have any disorders or mental illnesses because I'm afraid and secretly faking it without myself knowing and doing it. I don't think you are necessarily needing to be afraid of faking it or to take on the definitions of what other people may or may not think about you faking it. Um, suppressing it is definitely not good. Saying that you have disorders or mental illnesses, I think you should say it um, maybe within certain circles. I think if you say it to absolutely everyone, there are going to be people who do not understand and who will judge that. But knowing that going into it is also empowering for you because you can still choose to say it knowing that their response, whatever it may be, and if it's a negative one, doesn't actually reflect on you as a truth. Does that make sense, YB? You don't have to be ashamed of saying it. Um, and you can, of course, with boundaries, pick and choose who you will tell that to. But you shouldn't feel shame, you know, by what some other person may say or be thinking uh, about whether you're faking it or uh, doing it for attention. And uh, don't get me wrong, there are people that do fake things and do do things for attention. But even those people, I mean, I don't really point the finger at those people because they probably 
<laughs> again, I'm going back to family dynamics. They probably didn't get that attention uh, as children. And so they've learned that one this one way to get attention is this thing. And so they engage in that thing so that they can... They can get their ego boost. They can they can get some good feeling because they're probably feeling very bad a lot of the time. I'm not sure why my face keeps smiling. Maybe because the microphone in front of my mouth. This is a very serious thing, and I'm not actually smiling. Um, but yeah, if uh, if I'm giving you the impression that I'm laughing at you or whatever, I'm not. Just so you know. Uh, Anka, yes, Anka agrees with me on this. You shouldn't be ashamed of anything that is a result of your mental health or trauma. Exactly. Who you choose to share it with, um, you know, is up to you. But going into it, you can be empowered in when you do decide to share it, that whatever they think, it's on them. Marquis, I, I am fine actually, as can be in my situation. Best not to say it here. Well, if you don't want to say it here, Marquis, no pressure, you don't have to. We have been doing the share here as I was, um, you know, off the internet for a while. We didn't have the stage and then I had an extremely late start with the stream. But um, if you don't want to share today, you do not have to. If you want to just listen and maybe learn or uh, if, if I record this and put this on YouTube, obviously not the chat. Uh, I will sh be happy to share any clips with you. And Anka goes on to finish with, unless it will hurt others. And yes, that's true. I agree with that too, Anka. Uh, Samuel, no. No thank you, Samuel. But we uh, appreciate you attempting. And then we have... Uh, Oh, Samuel, you made me lose my space of what I was reading. Marquis said, I am inevitable. And Wabi said, that's another reason why I struggle to express my feelings. <laughs> and then uh, Stormy said, over the past two years, I have gained more involuntary emotions. And it happens more when I watch others, Tourette's, streamers, or YouTubers. That's interesting. Maybe there's some sort of a um, self-reflection thing going on there when you see that stormy. And Anka says, also people are becoming a lot more understanding of disabilities. Yes, this is true too, Anka. People are less likely to judge these days. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that part, but there is definitely a group that is less likely to judge that you can find stormy with support. As Tommy says, I think a lot of this is from what happened in the past. I don't want to get into it right now, but maybe later. It's not something I want to... You know what? That's fine. We are all in different stages of our lives. We are all in different stages of our healing. And sometimes that means we're in different stages of our ability to share or our desire to share certain personal things. If you don't want to share, there is no pressure. You will share it when you're ready. And if you don't want to share it, that's fine too. No judgments either way. Bobby says, I think I have a disorder. So I've done a bunch of research into it and I'm still doing research. That's good that you're doing research, Wabi. And that's how I know a lot about stimming. I've told a few people and I've even looked at symptoms of the disorder and highlight what I think. I show and send it to my close friends so they can highlight what they see in me. And one of my friends is really supportive and helping me do it. That's so wonderful. And Tristy, thank you. Oh, you're wonderful for doing that. Leon is so lucky that he has you as a mod. I, I feel like I may need a mod too in the future. I don't know uh, that much about moderating, but I definitely will need one. But Wabi says, you could be catching ticks from them too. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Yes, I agree with Anka too. Anka says, it's good that you have people to help you with this. Yeah, there's so many people um, that are out there that just do not have 
any hope because they do not have people to help them do these things. They do not have the support, not in real life and not online. And they they get into things like depression or they, they become hateful and they become bitter and they express those things you know, online. There are people who are in pain and who are suffering and uh, hopefully, I mean, hopefully they find my stream, you know, and hopefully they see my videos, but hopefully at some point they will find us or people that we talk to about these things from our knowledge and our sharing, they will be able to learn from those things. I firmly believe that's me. I haven't had support for five years now. I'm so grateful. That, yeah. And I'm so grateful that you have too, Anka. I'm grateful for you uh, as well as choosing this community because it is a choice. This is the wonderful thing that I promote about boundaries is that you can choose this community. Yes, I choose you. But you can also choose me. It is a choice that you get to make and you can make that with anybody in your life. Your opinion matters, right? That's what we say. Your opinion matters. So if that's the case, then that means that your choice matters and that your boundary matters and that your requests to respect your boundaries matters gosh that's wonderful to say honestly when i first uh when, when i was younger i never ever would have believed or said any of these things to someone because i didn't believe these things i was raised to believe that my opinion didn't matter and i didn't have a choice and look at me now. If it's possible for me, it's possible for you. I'm pointing at you guys, but you can't see it because I don't have the lead motion. And feels, uh, Stormy says, and feel scared to reach out to be pushed back down. Yes, Stormy. And with this new friend, she's nice and showing me I'm allowed to talk. I'm allowed to express myself. And I can go to her house whenever, and it doesn't matter when. This is a beautiful thing. This is something that is teaching you a new lesson, and therefore a new way in the future to interact with the world that is different from what we learned in our family dynamic. Uh, Anka says, I think what you're doing is amazing. If I had a channel like this when I was a kid, my life would have... That's exactly why I even stream, Anka. Uh, as a kid, if there was a channel like this, uh, my life would have been... If there was even one person to validate me, uh, even one, one person to show compassion instead of trying to use me, I... I would have been a different person. I literally, like, I, I would literally wouldn't have made so many of the bad choices that I made. And uh, unfortunately, there wasn't. But now, because I have gone through all of that and I've been able to come out of it, I can do that. And it's my goal to do it until I'm dead for others for others because I have done it for me my time is done now it's time to share what I have learned uh, to share the things that I am ashamed of oh I'm not ashamed of them anymore but that I was ashamed of to share the things that I kept secret for so long because in my family you know you never, you never share your business in the street, right? That was the core belief I was raised with. And maybe many of you were too. That is very dangerous. That core belief of we don't tell other people our family things. We don't tell other people our business. 
that is brought from a lack of transparency and from a set of parents who are hiding from the truth. We do not hide from the truth anymore. That is their choice. If my mom or my dad or whoever still wants to choose to hide, that's fine. I don't judge you for that. I definitely judge your bad behaviors towards me, but I don't judge you. Unga says, uh, Stormy says, I'm learning how to be okay with myself, expanding. Yes, Stormy, this is a growing process that literally is going to happen every single day of your life. And it pro doesn't ever stop, but it definitely gets easier and it definitely gets better. With awareness, everything is possible. And Anka says, it's why I never been able to poop on people because of that reason. I had so many put me down, tell me I was nothing and my potential was wasted. I really want to spend my life making people feel okay about growing into their potential. Yes, and me too. And many of us have grown up with those verbal abuses and we believed falsely those things that we were told as children. I know this is off topic, but what's everyone's zodiac? Uh, yes, it is off topic, but um, we can go there. Everyone who wants to answer, that's fine. Um, I, what am I? I'm Aries. Um, and I know my rising sign just because I once did a chart. Uh, with a Leo rising. I don't know what it means, but take it as you will. Anka says Cancer and rising star is Cancer too. Wow, that's very interesting. Stormy says I'm a Virgo and YB says I'm an Aries. That's wonderful. I love it. I say the things that I say to say this. Once we have learned to be able to come through these hard times and trials in our life, we are able to then, if we have the boldness, like I'm doing, share that information with others to strengthen them and help them with life change. This is a chain reaction and can keep on going. Uh, as the movie Pay It Forward, I don't know if you guys saw it, it's very old, um, but it has a concept that is wonderful. What you learn, you share. What you are given, you give. And that is really all I'm doing. My rising sign is more dominant? Really? Oh, I did not know that. So Aries, Leo... So Leo would be more dominant, but it's, are they not both fire? I think they are. Let me take a drink of water here. One second, guys. Okay, I'm back. Any other questions that you guys have for me? Leos are leaders? Really? I don't feel like a leader, but that's pretty cool. Maybe I will lead people into light instead of darkness. Um, did you guys want to ask anything else about boundaries that I had covered? Or um, abusive dynamics? Or what is abuse? Or... Um, the questions to ask yourself to get in touch with your feelings. Any of these things that I... Gosh, we covered a lot today, actually. I shared a lot, but also you guys shared a lot. Do you feel like you learned something here? I know, obviously, we are all connected in a team. But we wouldn't be a team if not everyone is win-win, right? So, good. That makes me happy. I'm glad. Yeah. Any relationship, any team, if it's not win-win, if it's win-lose, 
It's a losing team. You're both losing, even when you win. To win-win is the only concept that should exist in healthy relationships. How should you approach your feelings? Well, I did mention uh, to write down why you why you like them, right? What is the thing or qualities that they have, things they do that re- make you so comfortable that re- may also remind you of an early family dynamic. Figure this out. Do the little self-reflection work that it will take while you're allowing these feelings to bloom. I'm not guarding you against them, nor am I saying don't get into this relationship. But before you get into this relationship, think about it. Oftentimes we don't. We just, we meet somebody, we're attracted to them, we're like, oh, I like them, I love spending time with them. And then we're basically whisked away in, you know, hormones and... Uh, certain biological processes that you know happen and feelings and things and projections of expectations we have on a mate and all kinds of other things before any of that happens consider why do I like this person what is it that I feel comfortable about them and how does this relate to how I am with my family members In the first three months, you will be in what's called the honeymoon period. Right now, you are in the honeymoon period. And in the honeymoon period, it's very easy to ignore all the red flags. And if you're used to ignoring red flags, because certain bad things or unhealthy things have been normalized for you, then you won't catch them, Stormy, and I don't want that to happen to you. Um, If you do, I believe exclamation point this one, no. Oh, that's right, because the stream wasn't working. I had to cut that off. Let me uh, get that invite for you, okay? Yeah, unfortunately, this hiccup with the stream today was... It's not usually like this. Um, Hopefully it won't be. I mean, I can't really say this is my second stream. But uh, yeah, so Stormy, definitely go through those questions. Um, Question what you're feeling and why you're feeling these things about that person and how it relates to early family dynamics. Because... Many times we are attracted to what we know. As I covered earlier, I'll just quickly cover again. You cannot be attracted to or feel comfortable with something that is going to be different than your family dynamic that you grew up with. You will feel uncomfortable even if it is a healthy relationship. The reason is you have to first become aware of the unhealthy early family dynamic to unlearn those things and be able to process the trauma to move into what a healthy relationship even looks like. Does that make sense? Your first attraction is going to be to someone who reminds you of the comfort that you first had with your two relational map uh, patterns. Your, your first two relational maps, your mom, your dad, and the caregiver, whoever that was, if mom and dad was not in the picture. So, in order not to repeat that process, we need to look at that process. Does that make sense, Stormy? That's why I'm having you ask those questions about that particular person you like. Can you see how that would help you to not fall into that trap by engaging in that? Mm-hmm. This seems a lot like me and my siblings, uh, the, uh, me and my siblings use, and how he acts is, as, is that really? Yes, it is. What you're finding funny 
And what your siblings find funny is directly related to family. The closeness or non-closeness that you have with your siblings is being replicated in your subconscious with this person. So you feel comfortable with him. If he had a different type of humor, but was perfect for you, you wouldn't like him. Does that make sense? It's not because he's worth less in your eyes. It is just because you're going to gravitate towards what you already understand as a relational map. And where does that happen? It happens in childhood. It happens with your family. So by looking at that family dynamic, you can pick apart what these other attractions are, as well as other triggers. They're both related. Your triggers are related to the family dynamic, and your romance is related to the family dynamic. Because where did you learn about romance? Where was the first time you ever saw romance? Your parents! They're the only ones who could teach you. You literally came out of that. You know, you grew up with them. So whatever their dynamic was, good or bad, you are going to look for something similar only because it's been normalized. It's been made comfortable for you. Whether it's healthy or not. Awareness comes in learning if it's good or bad. And self-empowerment comes in choosing what you're going to do. Are you going to be a slave to your subconscious and your past? Or are you going to now make another choice? That is what I posit to you today. or well, all of you really. But Stormy specifically because... This attraction that you have to him is definitely related to an early family dynamic. He has a similar humor. What other things? Let's think about them together. What other qualities does he have? I know, make a list, okay? One side your mom, one side your dad, one side your siblings. And let's look at him. What you know about him, because you don't know a lot about him yet. Have you known him for a long time? If you haven't, just list the things you know. On the dad list, list the things that he has that you can think of that are similar to dad. On the mom side of the column, list the thing, the qualities that he has that are similar uh, to something that is similar to mom. And same thing for the siblings. You will find that this person that you are attracted to has similar qualities to these people. Or they elicit feelings that are similar to mom's. Okay, you guys just met basically. I would not consider dating this person. I would consider basically being friends with him while you like him and get to know him. If you want, I can give you, um, you know, some questions to ask him, some things to look out for while getting to know him, and how to kind of keep a level head while you're getting to know him. In a sense, I want you to look at him in an objective way as much as you can. Obviously, you like him and those feelings are going to be so strong super super strong but you are not a slave to those and i'm happy to remind you of that every day you are not a slave uh, to your past you do not have to be a slave to your emotions even towards this person this is all active choice if you choose it to be right if you let the subconscious take over if you shy in this case, if you're feeling shy and you're not sure how to start talking to him, you do talk to him, but just not as much. Do you have people that you're not as shy around with you guys, like hanging out together? 
Notes, yeah. Notes definitely helps. Definitely take notes while you're getting to know him. The things that you're getting to know about him. He, if he likes you back, he's going to also be wearing a little mask. And that little mask is not something that he knows about or he's thinking about. So if you bring it up to him, he's going to probably say, I'm not wearing a mask. <laughs> Yoma Shio. Hi, Yoma. Yes, send us notes. <laughs> Join the Discord with us, Yoma. <laughs> Good to see you. If you want... Uh, what I think you could do, Stormy, is bring somebody with you sometimes to hang out with you guys that you know you're not shy around. That person can work as a buffer for you to be able to be yourself around this person and also not feel shy and you'll feel safe being yourself. Does that make sense? You can set up some kind of... Um, depending on what your activities are that you like, you can set up some kind of group thing that can be super fun for all of you. That way, you won't feel as shy because just having this other person around, it will be like a support. And having this other person around, they sometimes can see things that they cannot I think in the old days, they called them chaperones, but your friend is not going to be your chaperone. But you are going to engage them like that when you ask them to hang out, because they might not want to be with them. They might just want to hang out with you. But you can ask them as a favor, hey, I'm shy. Do you think you could, you know, hang out with us? Anka says, Ed Stormy, have you thought or got uh, thought about getting a fidget toy? It's helped me a lot with anxiety and social situations. I have heard of this. This is also an option. And I think that's great, Anka, that you offered that. You can try that also, Stormy. If you ask uh, that person that you're not shy around to come and they don't want to, maybe grab this fidget toy to use while you're hanging out with them. My friend said he's not nice, and the other one I'm getting to trust more talks to me about why I like him. Okay, your friend said he's not nice. This is a red flag. So, you can either no notice it now and save yourself months of heartache, or you can wait, ignore the red flag like we often do with our little rose-colored glasses, and then go through, uh, <laughs> then go through it later. And I will be happy to go through it with you either way, whatever you choose. But I'm telling you now, if your friend said he's not nice, there may be a reason. And I think by making the list I mentioned, you might be able to find out what that reason is. So, dad on the one side, column of mom on the other right brother uh brother and siblings uh or brother or siblings on in the middle and then what does he have in common with them how do you feel that similar with him that you feel with them does that make sense no, but thank you for the offer. I fidget with my jacket because I tend to throw things. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. If you don't want to use a fidget spinner, you don't have to. But um, I think it would be good for you to hang out with him uh, while still liking him. And, you know, you don't have to. I'm not telling you not to like him. But what I'm telling you is while you're liking him and these feelings are growing first stop yourself and consider why you like him what it is that you feel comfortable with and why you feel comfortable with it does that make sense for me yumashu i think sent me a note i'll check later
uncle says, I have a tiny one that fits in my pocket. I play with it in there because I'm pretty self-conscious about my hands. I don't know if that will help. Yes, interesting. That's good uh, that you do have it there. And why are you self-conscious about your hands? That's cute. <laughs> I'm sure there's a reason behind that. But share if you will or not. That's fine. Uh, let me just grab some more water here. Okay. Those of you who have come to stream but have not yet joined the Discord, uh, please consider it. Uh, also, those of you who are new, if you have any questions or anything you want to share or want advice on, I'm happy to um, help with that. We're going to be winding down the stream in about 15 minutes, but I will be on the Discord uh, to welcome uh, any new people. Hopefully, there's a few of you who have joined. And um, yeah, just letting you know that I will soon be eating my dinner. I bite my cuticles. I used to do that too. That's a nervous thing. I think it wasn't until I wanted to like wear nail polish that I kind of had to force myself to stop doing that. So let me ask you this. As I mentioned to you guys earlier, I like to, when people tell me something, I like to repeat it to them to make sure that I understand. So I'm going to engage in that with you guys right now. And I would like to know if you can write down for me just a summary of what it is that you learned tonight and how you believe it can help you right now, today, starting, well, maybe not today, it's 12.35 a.m., but start, how you feel that what you learned from here tonight and how you can apply it. Hopefully there has been a lot. I may also make clips of this um, for those who have missed this stream. Um, most likely cutting out the entire uh, first portion where I was having weird sound things and uh, we kept streaming and then not streaming. And by the way, guys, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but thank you so much. I really appreciate your patience with me tonight with that stream scuff. It was uh, it was really rough, but I'm hoping that uh, we're out of the woods in the sense of, of ever having that again. And hopefully that will, it's like a one-time thing and it won't happen anymore. And Rambles, you were a great help, by the way. Stormy says, but one thing my real friend said is that when he's around certain people, he acts different and can get a little out of hand around his friends. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is something that for me personally, especially with my experience, that's okay. That's totally fine, YB, and welcome back. Um, this is something to write down, Stormy. And date. If you can add a date, I would write down this quality because if he does this now, when he's in a relationship with you, maybe not right away because he doesn't yet feel comfortable with you, but when he is comfortable with you, he may be getting a little out of hand with you. So to be out on the lookout for this or any potential uh, the potential traps, especially when you're wearing your... What vibe is it that he doesn't fit? That may be their opinion. But them saying he's not nice is another thing. If he's actually not nice, that's something that you need to look at. And think to yourself, why am I attracted to him if he's not nice? Right? Why? Something is obviously attracting you to him. 
So is it possible that he maybe reminds you of someone else you wanted to be close with? You know what I'm saying? I don't know what vibe that friend is referring to and that if he's, they say he doesn't fit the vibe, that might be that he doesn't fit their vibe. But if their vibe matches your vibe, then he also kind of doesn't fit your vibe. Do you know what I mean? YB says, but Stormy, I do have something similar to your nail biting. When I get bored or nervous, I chew my gums. Anka says, what is it about him that's not nice? Like, why doesn't your friend like him? Yeah, exactly. If there's a re there is a reason that your friend doesn't like him. We don't know what it is because we have not spoken to your friend. Uh, and if you ask your friend, yeah, you won't. If he likes you too, you won't see his not nice side until probably two, three months later. But that's another stream. So... I say that to say this, Stormy. If your friend is already telling you, before you have even gotten involved with him, that he's not nice, that he has, a, you know, just another side to him when he's with his friends and things like that, these are causes to just take a step back. This is not to say don't like him. This is understand why you like him. That's what I'm telling you. When you do this columns exercise and find the similarities between him and your family members, you will have a clearer picture, and so will I probably if you share it with me, what it is that you're actually attracted to and why you're attracted to it. Does that make sense? Anga said, has your friend ever said anything specific and to be cautious? Well, I think your friend telling you he's not nice. That's okay, struggle wolf. You are a little bit late, but that's fine. We're happy to have you. And whatever it is that uh, you want to share, there's still some time to do so. If you have a question or if you want me to go over anything I've uh, I've covered with you at some point in the past or just if you want to share something that's fine too Stormy I think your friend is coming to you about this or no, they didn't come to you but when you've asked what your friend told he doesn't open doors gets too loud keeps things going like a joke or harsh oh yes the sarcastic joker this is hidden aggression. I'll be honest with you. When people make mean jokes, there is hidden aggression. And that is generally not a safe uh, space to be in with someone. If, if you use boundaries and you tell them not to make that joke and they disrespect you or they blame you or they... Uh, try to turn it on you like oh you can't take a joke or make fun of you that is someone to stay far 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 away from stormy that that is a person who has hidden aggression doesn't yet feel comfortable sharing it with you openly but when they get comfortable with you they will and it will be abusive this is a no-no stormy he doesn't open doors he doesn't have to. No offense, but he doesn't have to open the door for you. Maybe for your friend, your friend has been, you know, raised to believe that he has to open the door for, you, for them uh, or he's not nice. This is not necessarily true and this varies from culture to culture, actually, this opening doors thing. Him getting too loud means he does not have boundaries and that's also a no-no. This is a boy who does not have self-control yet, Stormy, and it's not your job to teach him. If, yes, exactly what Anka said. Anka and I have been there. Take it from us. Jokes 
uh, start turning into digs and insults and are justified as being quote-unquote jokes or I'm only joking, which only is a minimizing word. You are not the subject of someone's joke. If you are not laughing, it's not a joke and they're not funny, so they should probably stop. This is something that you can use as a boundary in the future if you get to that point with him. Will you take all of my advice today and hopefully write down the similarities in the columns? Hopefully, yes. Does that mean you won't be with this guy? We don't know. That's not my place to judge. But what I can tell you is that based on what your friend is saying, there is definitely red flags there. Yes, and it is also gaslighting, Anka. That's true. Um... That's basically my sister? Yes, that's a learned behavior that your sister does. So, how convenient that you would be attracted to someone who also does that, right? If you are used to hearing that from your sister, and then you hear these jokes slash insults or whatever, taking jokes too far from this person you like, The reason you like them is subconsciously they'll remind you of the comfort that you have for your sister, towards your sister, and what you desire from your sister. Does that make sense? These early family dynamics, Stormy, are the catalyst for us to understand why our romantic relationships usually mimic our early childhood relationships. There's my problem. I can get a little bit too harsh upon some things and I can get too rough on playing around with my friends. Have He hasn't seen that of me and I tend to push it out. Okay, this is something, if this is a problem of yours that you recognize, You can choose, or not choose, up to you, to create a boundary and learn self-control so that when someone is around you and you want them to express self-control, they're able to choose to respect it, or you can give them a consequence. Consequences make us better people. Consequences make us better lovers. Consequences make us better friends. Consequences is not something to be afraid of. Yes, it's hard to say no to people that we care about in the beginning, but having consequences and learning how to strongly use them is literally life-saving. If you know that you can become abusive and you sometimes choose to be playing rough with your friends, you have a choice whether or not you want to keep doing that. This is a habit of yours and habits can be broken, Stormy. You only have to want to do it. If you're choosing abusive behaviors today, that does not mean you have to choose abusive behaviors tomorrow. Does that make sense? Taking the reins of your of your self-control will only help you and draw you closer to the love that you actually want. Zevran's leaving. Ah, oh, Zevran, thank you for coming. I didn't I didn't uh I hope you got something from these these chairs as well as the things I said. Anka says, especially if you feel like your sister doesn't acknowledge you, you look for it somewhere else in similar people. Exactly, Anka. You're seeing the pattern. Oh, gosh, this is wonderful to see. So, what Anka said is true, and she's sharing it with you, Stormy. You can choose to accept this information or not. That's fine. We're not going to judge you either way. But what we will do is make you aware of the pitfalls so you can choose to either step in it or not step in it. Okay? 
And what I'm telling you about this dynamic that you may or may not have in the future with this boy you like, he has already possibly shown, we're going to just say hypothetically because we don't know him and we don't judge him either, possibly shown you some red flags. In terms of behavior, this is not to attack him as a person. His engagement in certain behaviors would definitely be cause for concern for relationships for you for the future because of the similarities to certain family relationships that you have been normalized in. Yes, exactly, Anka. <laughs> and if it does all go to shit <laughs> and you end up having a breakup, there's a place for that in the server too. <laughs> Uh, hopefully this doesn't happen, but we will. We will support you here. Uh, either way, through the breakup uh, or through the lovely relationship. Hopefully it is a lovely relationship. Stormy says, what I have read up on him is he's respectful and that it seems like he's being ignored and he has chosen to stand out where I have chosen to be quiet. This is a classic reason for attraction. Many times, things like narcissism and selfishness and arrogance become attractive qualities that we like to think are confidence, which is not the same thing. Arrogance and confidence is not the same thing. Since you told me that, I'm going to send you something on the differences between arrogance and confidence, so you will never question the difference again. I, too, in times of being shy, have been attracted to people, arrogant people, selfish people, who were more outspoken than I was, who were more opinionated than I could be. And I saw this before I learned about arrogance as confidence and that was something i wanted so i subconsciously thought if i'm with this person this will rub off on me this is false one confidence is very different than air having a relationship with somebody who's arrogant two being with someone who's confident is very different than being with someone who is narcissistic or selfish. This is a mistake to try to go after these qualities that are opposite of you and be with them with someone else. If you want to stand out and not be shy, I will help you to do that. Just so you do not have to have this latent subconscious attraction to somebody who has a quality that you can easily acquire. Does that make sense? If we just spend the time working on those things, you too can, you don't even have to stand out, but you do not have to be quiet or shy. You don't feel like he's confident. You feel like he wants to be seen. Okay, yes, there is a very good chance he's not confident. He, he may very well be seeking attention and be a narcissist uh, and arrogant, which is another, another red flag for him. But we don't know him, so we cannot necessarily say... And when I say red flag, I mean it's a red flag for you with him. That doesn't mean that he can never have a relationship or be with someone else and be that way. Yes, that's true, Anka, what Anka said as well. If he's trying to stand out by being rebellious, this will put you in potential crossfire as well as potential trouble. And Stormy, I don't think you, you need that in your life there is no one you know who's especially that you've known for two months who is worth uh you know getting in trouble for or being in any kind of potential crossfire i suggest getting to know him continuing 
to write down these red flags, which I have told you tonight. Making the list of the columns with his comparisons. Uh, don't compare him. I mean, you know, the comparisons with your family and the similarities. As well as watch him. Yes, right now he's wearing the mask. And uh, if he likes you too, he's definitely going to be on his sort of best behavior. But if he's showing red flags in his best behavior, you're definitely not going to get anything better when he gets to know you more and feels more comfortable with you. Anka said, I nearly went to jail because of an ex and spent a few months on the street because of a guy being... Yeah, this is... Mm -hmm. Rebellious and cool. Yeah. I don't want this for you, Stormy. And if you already have issues with anxiety and OCD, you don't want to be with someone who is calm. Like you. Funny also like you, but maybe doesn't have the sense of humor uh, that your sister has. And these may be things that you want to change. First, about yourself, like you mentioned you know, being harsh sometimes um, and, and this kind of thing, you can change that. And maybe that is something that should be your focus before uh, allowing all of these feelings with this person that you like. If you feel the need to spend extra time with them, stop yourself and see if you're capable of that kind of self-control and maybe you aren't and that's okay but let's find out right why not check if you can stop yourself from spending uh, all of your time with this person and uh you know figuring out first what it is that his red flags are or whatever as well as your red flags and your triggers then you will be able to go into a relationship with him better understanding who you're in a relationship with. You're not going to be like, yeah, I got to know him. We've known each other for a couple of weeks. We had sex and now, two months later, I feel like he's totally changed. I don't know who he is. He hasn't changed. He was the same person. You just didn't get to know him. You just had sex with him. So... Jumping into anything stormy, and I'm not saying you're going to have sex with this person, but the, the problem I'm having is it's hard to read him. Yes, this, okay, so a lot of this is starting to come together. We have said he's hiding behind a mask. You have mentioned that your friend said he's not nice. You have mentioned that he sometimes takes jokes too far. Uh, this is possibly hearsay, but if you've experienced yourself, then it's not hearsay. It's actually how he is. And also, you're now mentioning that uh, he stands out and is trying to be seen. This, a few of these qualities sound like he is very likely narcissistic and very likely uh, attention seeking. These are not good qualities to start a relationship with. H Hello Fardine, welcome. Um, we were actually just closing down the stream but uh, I don't know if you wanted to share anything uh, before we go. You can. Fardine is uh, a little later than you, Struggle Wolf. <laughs> if I didn't, I don't have anything to share, but I just want to. Well, good morning and good night, as they say. <laughs> so, Stormy, I hope this helps you. Uh, and also the others of you who are listening who maybe may run into this type of situation in the future. Uncle Wolf says, it'd be different if he wanted to be aware of these things and wants to change. Exactly. If he was, you know, aware uh, or had any sense of awareness, then it's not dangerous. 
While he is not aware, however, it is dangerous. So Stormy, I would not recommend uh, jumping headfirst into this relationship or any relationship with this person uh, other than friendship. Through friendship and obviously being around your friends so you're not going to be shy, you will be able to get to know him and he will be able to express over time all of the facets of how he is and who he is in various situations. Does that make sense? Without you making an emotional deposit there and getting hurt. Fardine says, I want to get out of this bottomless pit I have made. The bottomless pit gravity falls back into <laughs> Yes. Yes, you, you are getting out of it, though. You're literally in the process of doing that, which is wonderful. I mean, yes, you still have, you know, those moments of limerence, but it will pass. It will pass, Fardine. Sugar Lily, welcome. You're coming at the end of my stream. Welcome to your chat as well. We have gone over so much today. Be careful, I might summon dollars. I don't know how to summon dollars, but uh, I gosh, I hope so. I definitely would like to get uh, some special snacks. Thank you, Lily. I'm glad to have you. We're doing a share. Um, as well as, if, I don't know if you have any questions or anyone in your chat has any relationship questions I can answer before we end us our stream. Lily, this stream was so funny in the beginning. I'm surprised anybody stayed with us. <laughs> it was wonderful to see the support. I, I couldn't get on for 45 minutes. I don't know if you guys saw my Twitter uh, post, but I was posting about tech stuff. You were Asian food? Oh, what kind? That's awesome. <laughs> Her entire stream was about Asian food. Blackpool way or great. <laughs> yeah, chicken mainly? Okay. Nice. I like chicken. I can go in on some... Uh, Asian dishes with chicken. Mm -hmm. Well, if you guys have any questions, obviously, or if you want to join the Discord, uh, yeah, Lily, I don't know if you want to join the Discord, but you're invited. Um, it is uh, mainly a place of healing, a place of sharing, gaming with each other. Chicken, chicken, good, <laughs> Wackpool says. <laughs> If Fardin says, I think what also helps is focus on your goals and not be obsessed with this one girl. Yes, that's exactly true. If you stay focused on your goals uh, and you try to learn how to use the self-control to stop your mind from going to those. Yes, simp wisely, exactly. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what, what I'm saying. Not only to you, Fardin. Well, Fardin, it came because you you had a breakup. You, right now, in the early days of the breakup, you're literally like all your thoughts are on this person because you spent so much time with this person. We we fall for people, and then we want to spend all of our time with them. That's what I'm telling Stormy not to do. Uh, with this current person that she just met. You stop yourself. You ask those important questions that I have, that I have told you guys. By stopping yourself and recognizing and first having the awareness, why do I like this person? What is it about them that reminds me of my columns, as you have your mom column, your dad column, your siblings column, right? What is similar about them to my family in each of those columns? This obsession is keeping the imaginary soul of her alive inside and I need to destroy it. Yes. You have a whole chart for this? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, send it to me in the Discord. And you can share it in, in our main chat. Uh, 
Right. Once once you verify in the Discord, you actually will be able to see the breakups X no contact and there's encourage no contact. That's the perfect place for that. This limerence for you was caused literally by the breakup. This will pass. I know I've been telling you this, but it's true. This th these early first relationships and especially the ones that are so somewhat short-lived or has there has been a hurt involved there's going to be pain for a time you cannot expect that you're going to get over this as you would get over something else heartbreak is a bitch so to speak uh, for lack of a better term heartbreak is a terrible thing, which is why I offer good night, Stormy. Let me know if you can, if you ended up doing that list with the columns, and I would like to go through that with you. Okay? If feel free to message me in the Discord also if you need to. And later when I end the stream, I will come and welcome you guys, the new people to the Discord. How is simping be a positive thing? Heartbreak sucks. There are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. Yes, there are no shortcuts to heartbreak and getting over it and healing. Healing is not linear. It's all over the place. And I do not want pain for you, Stormy. So I hope that some of the things that I have told you tonight before you go to sleep, you will take them to heart and act on them. Anka says, oh my friend, I've literally spent more of this crying into a pillow, but it's slowly fading. Yes, exactly. It's day by day, step by step, choice by choice. Sugarly says, I handle breakups pretty well, but some friends get crushed hard by. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We are. We are. We're all built differently. And because we have all come from different family origins, and those families have core beliefs, and those core beliefs were passed on to us, and they are not all the same. Fartin says, now I feel stuck in the healing process, but let's refocus and recenter. Exactly. Every time, Fartin, every time it goes to her, I refocus, I recenter. It will work. And it does work, I'm telling you, because I've literally had to do it myself. You're a walking cliche, Anka. <laughs> the breakups are hard for you. Well, I have support for you also in the uh, Discord server, and I will, um, I will share with you, well, I'll show you around that particular category of the Discord server. A walking technical nightmare? Why is that, Lily? <laughs> Fardin says if I don't do that it will last nine months or something it won't I promise you it won't you have support <laughs> you have us you have me obviously but when I cannot be with you there are others you're not alone in this you're totally going to get through this we're a team. Um, I have all kinds of technical difficulties in material form. <laughs> Barty says, I don't have time for that. Thanks for the reassurance. I have a support group, so yes. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Technical difficulties in material form? I don't know exactly what that means, Sugar Lily. Aww. Anka says, Farting, my worst breakup left me two years of dealing with stuff, but it does get better slowly. And it does. It really does. It's not fast. Well, she says, I can't relate to breakups because my ex decided instead of breaking up with me, he just ghosts me. I hate those, Tristy. That happened to me too. Oh gosh. Ghosting should have its own set. I might actually make that. I think I'm going to make that in the Discord. 
Ghosting needs its own section. Ghosting is totally different uh, than a breakup. And the things that it does to you, the questions that are go unanswered that it leaves you with are just, they're so hard. They're so difficult to get through, especially alone, which most people do try to get through it alone. Because they're like feeling worthless that they were even ghosted. Ghosting is such an invalidation of all the time that you spent with the person. Yes, it needs its own section. I'm going to create that tonight. Farden says, it makes me want to feel like romantic relationships are really worth it if you are in this pain. Y you mean aren't really worth it, right? Farden? Farden says, luckily this one is short-lived and the pain fades completely. Yes. Hmm, how to explain, really says. Basically, I shut down randomly sometimes. My brain likes to blue screen a lot. I can definitely relate to that. Is it like a brain fog where you're just your brain just kind of gets fogged over and you just sit there staring? And Uncle Wolf says, "Add farting can't have a rainbow with no rain, though." Well, that's true, and that's a positive way to look at it. But we do not want to accept any kind of situations where other than accepting the breakup where we accept the behavior of the other person. That does not have to do with rain and rainbows. That is unacceptable. Sugar Lily says, sometimes my batteries run out for no reason. Mine too, Sugar Lily. Uh, Anka says, yes, but that is compromise that we are making. Yes. Puchowski said, I get that a lot. Yeah, Puchowski also goes through this. We, def we definitely can relate to that. A little cheesy says, but when I found out, oh boy, I sent him creepy, really creepy messages from a burner email until he finally responded and told me he moved on. Oh my gosh, Justine. Look, I wasn't even expecting to get back with him after either when I stumbled upon him on the Book of Faces. Oh, the Book of Faces. Yeah, we don't, we don't go to the Book of Faces. Uncle Wolfie said, unfortunately, yeah, but some of the memories have been so worth all the pain. Yes, that's true, Uncle. I definitely agree with you on that. Mine too. Mine have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the blank stare. I have that too, Sugar Lily, too. That's so funny that we can relate on that. YB says, is that disassociating? I thought it was just zoning out because I do that a lot. I, I thought it was di zoning out too, but it may be called dissociating. It's a mood. <laughs> it's a vibe. If Fardine says, I, Uncle Wolfie, I don't want to experience that state of mind, to be honest, and that means boundaries. Yes, Fardine, you are learning from me. Gosh, my, my time on stream has not been wasted. I, I'm so happy to hear my words coming out of you guys' mouths. Boundaries, Fardine. Boundaries will lead you to your happiness. Boundaries, obviously, with the ex, but also learning boundaries with others and self-control. If you can do this in this relationship, you will be able to take this into other relationships as a skill, as an awareness, which will make you strong. Uh, Fardin says, but you also have to think like this. You were completely fine without him or her in your life. Yes, exactly. And this is what I often tell everyone it would in the at no contact when I'm giving advice is that you have to, in a sense, understand that healing is not linear. But when we have a breakup and we have lost this person from our lives who was basically there all the time, that does not mean we had no life before them. We have to go back to that state mentally, choosing to do so, in fact, in order to move forward. We need to remember who we were and how we were before we met that person. And we were wonderful before we met that person. We were confident before we met that person, right? So we are still that person, even though, you know, maybe we're bumming out, maybe we're crying all day, maybe we're overeating, whatever it is, while we're going through the breakup. 
we are still that person who was charismatic and shiny and feeling great when they met them. That person and us breaking up does not reflect on us. It reflects on the choice of them to break up with us for whatever reason they chose. We don't have control over that. What we have control over is wh where our power lies and our control lies over ourselves. What we're going to choose to think about with our time, how long we're going to obsess, right Fardin? You can choose how long you're going to stay in the obsession or refocus, recenter. And you're becoming stronger by doing this. YB says, Uncle Wolfie, all right, thank you. I'll do more research into that as well. Uncle Wolfie says to YB, kind of it's like a mid form, a mild form of it. Mm. Fardin says, should I rewrite it all with positive memories to move on? Yes, but not yet. Do not start writing positive memories because right now you are in the obsessive stage. You're in the, you're not in the denial stage and you're not in the acceptance stage. So since you're obsessing, writing positive memories is not going to bring you closer to healing. Right now, you need to focus on yourself and positive associations you have for yourself in your future without this person as well as uh, and I'll just wrap this up because I, I know I'm going over but thank you guys for your time as well as Fardin not only writing down positive things about yourself but you already have looked at the negative things that led to this breakup with this person but you don't yet see this person in a negative light and maybe for a time it would be healthy for you to look at those aspects of the relationship that you accepted or red flags that you ignored during that time does that make sense that's what you can focus on now if you're going to obsess Obsess on what the things are that you didn't notice that were red flags that they showed you. Obsess on what dreams you have for your future and what you're going to do and how you're going to fill your newfound time, which is actually a positive thing. Lutristi says, like for crying out loud, if he wanted to date someone else, I would have been cool with that. Before we were serious, he told me about a girl he liked that lived closer to him and I told him to ask her out, but then he put on that corny line, but I like you more. Yes. And at the time, before he ghosted you, he probably did. But clearly, he's not someone that you would have wanted to end up with because he is not able to do anything with confrontation. He showed you that by ghosting you. He also doesn't respect you or himself as he showed you by ghosting you when we get ghosted we feel worthless we feel invalidated but what we forget is that what the person is essentially doing is saying I don't have the guts and I am a coward so I'm going to stop talking to you and not face you Sugar Lily says, okay, Venus, I'm off for now. Time to go stuff my face with the BLT. Oh my gosh, Lily, that's an amazing idea. Have a good rest of your stream. End of stream. Yes, end of stream. <laughs> Thank you for rating and your chat also. Uh, Stormy says, I'm back real quick. Is there a way I can direct contact you on Discord? Yes, I sent the Discord uh, link in the chat, Stormy, if you want to join. And then you can join and right-click my name. And uh, mention and and add me. Uh, sorry, not add me. Uh, message me. Since we're in the server together, you can directly message me. Uncle Wolfie says, "Why be? When I dissociate, I feel like everything is made of light. Like I feel like I could put my hand through it. And walking is so weird. Oh, that's interesting, Anka." Pachowski says, "Okay, me too. Later, peace. Later, Pachowski. Nice to meet you." If Hardin says, "I think I should." have been emotionally invested that much in the first few months and that's my fault 
This is what I'm warning Stormy of, and I agree, Fardin. Those early months, it would have been amazing if you literally could just take a step back and say, okay, I like this person, but I'm going to get to know them long, over a longer time. I'm not going to let my feelings dictate my actions. I'm going to watch this person and see how and who they are before I fall for them. What similarities does this person have with my dynamics in my relational map, my family? All of this work, in what seems like work, will save you months and months of pain in the beginning. Me message held by a reason? Bullying? What? Hmm. YB says, when I zone out, it's like all my senses kind of disappear and I just completely go back. That happens to me too, YB. And this is by Tristy. I'm going to allow it. Um... Hmm. Okay, Farnin says, I, I don't know shit about relationships. And Anka says, that's disassociation. And I, I didn't know that either, Anka. Thank you for sharing that with us. Farnin says, can you even think logically while being completely in love, or isn't that possible? This is something that I strongly believe is possible. We haven't been taught that, and we do have to practice it, but it is possible to control who you're going to choose to spend your time with and who you're going to love. It is possible. You don't just have to love somebody because you love them or just be infatuated with someone because you're infatuated with them. You choose if you're going to engage in that behavior with them and therefore a relationship or not. And this starts with self-control. If we don't have it, then no, it's very hard to do. And it's especially hard to do by yourself. Uh, Stormy says, I think this association where you ensure you, what you are doing and where you're going, you're zoning out aware of your surroundings, not just focusing, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Uh, <laughs> Anka says, no problem, it's nothing serious unless you're a lousy driver or something. <laughs> you're welcome, YB. I'm glad you're learning a lot. Uh, opposites attract, is that true? In your case, if you're quiet and shy and he's arrogant and narcissistic, you are going to attract, but that's an unhealthy attraction. When people say opposites attract, that could be a healthy attraction or an unhealthy attraction. Yours from what you've told us, may be, I'm not going to say it is, may very well be an unhealthy attraction. But we can talk more about that. Uh, Anga said, yeah, sometimes, but it's never really as simple as that. And Fardin said, some of them don't tell you the truth or just leave you wondering. And that is, uh, yes, I agree. Uh, Anga said to Stormy, I've been attract to people who are polar opposite but it never turned out well yeah exactly and same Fardin said so i should focus on the negative aspects of the relationship and stuff yes not necessarily looking at her in the in a negative light but the negative aspects of the relationship and also why you got into it it's hard when you have no compass to guide you well there is a compass, uh, whether you believe in God or not, I think is irrelevant, but the compass is called the Book of Proverbs, and I'm happy to do a study on this with you uh, as to why it's a compass and how you can use it as a compass to find uh, the right healthy mate for you who will actually love you and appreciate you. Tristy said, and he's an idiot too, come on, he said yes. To a total stranger asking him out for crying out loud. XD. But I hope he's doing well and all the same. And is less of an idiot now when it comes to relationship. He's less of an idiot now? Or you mean you hope you are less of an idiot now? If you hope he's less of an idiot now, I hope so too. 
If you hope you're less of an idiot now, I don't think you were an idiot. I think you gave it your all, and this person was a wrong choice. Guys, I hope this has assisted you. Um, oh, well, I know from <laughs> when I hear you speaking back that you're definitely learning from me, so that's great. Uh, and I do hope to uh, continue in. Bye. Bye, Stormy. No, I hope he's less of an idiot. Just Thank you for coming, Stormy. And as I said, join the Discord. Um, and then you can just right click and message me. It should be easy peasy, but if not, let me know. And we will see you in the Discord as well. Yes, I've only been sharing my music on, uh, you know, my little intros for my YouTube videos. But I thought maybe I could also just put them on the streams as well. I don't, I don't think I'll get in trouble for that. Um, but yes, if you haven't joined the Discord and you'd like to, uh, like I said, we're basically our, we, we have an uh, actual about us, but it is a place for healing, a place for us to connect with each other. Um, you can hang out with other gamers, artists, writers, musicians, VTubers, anime lovers. We, we have all kinds of people from all walks of life, uh, but it, that Discord is there for supporting each other, helping each other. Reaching our goals, having fun, and sharing in this thing called life. As I always say, um, boundaries, consequences, is a good thing. So, you're London-born breed punk? I'm glad. Did you like my guitar riffs? That's awesome. Bye, YB. Love you too. Thank you so much for coming. I will hope I will see you at the next one. And we will talk more about that uh, other issue that I had mentioned to you earlier. Yes, going to the UK would be amazing. There, I, I, I think they say that there's like not a lot of sun there, or that it rains a lot. But I don't think, I don't think that matters. I still would like to experience it. <laughs> Better places to go. Anka's humble, humble with it for the UK. Representing, and we out, right, guys? Okay, I will see you guys in the Discord. Anyone who has joined, I will uh, come and welcome you. And then I'm off to eat because we have gone a little bit longer than I intended. And I'm a hungry, uh, I'm a hungry bear over here. So, thank you all for coming to the stream. Let's see if this works. I'm going to try the thank you scene. Uh, hopefully it does. If it doesn't, I'm just going to cut myself some slack. Uh, and I'm going to close this stream with an ending of my current song. I did want to put like a really cool thank you for coming sign and all these things. But since we've been having issues with the stream, uh, we may just end up needing to end it, but I'll try it. We'll see if it works and hopefully it does. I want to thank you all for the time that you've spent with me. Um, our team share has literally been so amazing and I definitely feel like um, I, I should keep streaming and I should keep sharing my experience, strength and hope with you guys and I see that you guys are sharing your experience, strength, and hope with each other, which is beautiful. I love you guys, and I will see you soon. And opening music. <laughs>